Hi hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, it is sunrise on the Emory River, although we'll never see it this morning because it's super foggy. It's that time of the year where the nighttime temperatures are colder than the water temperature and we end up with this super thick fog. So we can't barely see anything down through here, but what I do hope we see today is fish and lots of them because I'm gonna be doing some ultralight fishing today with gulp minnows and this tactic, it always produces, man. It always catches up, just a bunch of fish. And that's what we're after today, as many as we can possibly get. So I'll show you my bait here and then we're gonna get started. This is it. Just a 164th ounce jig head with a number eight size hook and a one inch gulp minnow in the smelt color on there. Got that on my ultralight rod. It's a six foot long panfish series rod from St. Croix, two pound test line and a 1000 size Daiwa reel. And I'm gonna take a, a section of this shoreline right through here and we just gonna throw it to bank. These overhanging trees, any rocks that are broken off, basically just anything down through here we're going to cast at it and see if there's some fish on it and hopefully catch us a few today. We're probably going to catch some leaves too. Look at all this mess right here. All this debris and stuff that's falling on the water. Fall, beautiful time of year. Great time to be catching some fish. But boy, it makes ultralight fishing a challenge with all these leaves in the water. But we're going to get after it, man. Enough of this yapping here on the camera. Let's get to it. This is going to be a raw and uncut video. Unedited. I'm turning this camera on and we're gonna leave it rolling for the duration of the trip out here this morning. Y'all gonna see every cast, every fish caught, every leaf and twig and everything else floating on the water. Y'all gonna see everything I reel in and everything I don't. It's gonna be just like you were here with me because well, that's the goal of these unedited videos is to bring you on a real fishing trip, just like you were out here with me. So we're gonna have some fun this morning despite the horrible conditions here on the water to try to cast around. We're gonna, we're gonna catch some fish regardless. We'll, we'll find some openings in this mess to be able to sink that jig down through. And once it gets down there and this fish's faces, they're gonna eat it. I think I got one after it right there. By gosh, second cast, we're already hooked up with the first fish. This fish has got a prestigious honor here of being fish number one on the video. He's, he's blown away by it. He had no idea. Think, say something to these people, fish. Accept your award speech here and do all that stuff that they do on the, on the Hollywood. He ain't got nothing to say. That fish can't read without a teleprompter. He can't come up with nothing off the top of his head. <clears throat> That's encouraging though. Second cast, we already got a fish. I got out here this morning and saw all this mess. I knew we were in for a hard time today. So it's encouraging to get bit so quickly. I came here versus going some other places because of the boat traffic today. It's, I'm filming this video on a Friday and there's a Tennessee football home game tomorrow. So the Vol Navy people, I talked about this on, a, on another ultralight trip here recently that I was filming on a out of the way kind of place. The Vol Navy, for those of you ain't from Tennessee, is a group of people that's got way too much money. They got more money than brains, but on the, Football home games, I got my line wrapped around my rod tip. Lord Almighty, we're in bad shape. There we go. These people, they got more money than brains and they got these huge houseboats. And what they do, instead of actually going to the ball game in the stadium, they drive their boats all the way up the river and they park outside the stadium on the river and watch the ball game there. It makes no sense to me, it's, it's silly. But that's what they do. So when you got a ball game on a Saturday, usually Thursday evenings and all day Friday, boats, huge yachts and houseboats, they going up, up the Tennessee River. Saturday, you get a little bit of a reprieve during the ball game, but then Sunday, they're all coming back down river. 
And so what you end up with is a bunch of boat wake. I mean, you just get rocked senseless if you're trying to fish on the Tennessee River anywhere out in the main channel on them Vol Navy people when they're going up and down. So today, I know they're gonna be going up to Tennessee all morning. And with this fog, they ain't gonna be paying attention to what's in front of them either because you know they own the river, at least that's what they think they do. So we own the Emory River where we probably won't see anybody today other than maybe another, another fisherman. So that's why I'm out here. We're gonna be doing another thing today too, y'all. This is important. My regular viewers, I'm gonna need y'all's help with something today. So I'm trying out a new camera. I'm gonna film a couple videos with this camera. It's, boy, we're, we're gonna have to move along here, y'all. Hold on a minute. And I'll tell you about this dang camera I'm trying out. We, we, we catching too much slop right here. I can't, I can't cast. Let's move up here to maybe an area we can get a little bit more of an opening. I wish they'd kick a generator on at the dam and maybe push some of this stuff down here. There ain't no, we ain't had no rain lately, so they probably ain't hardly any flow coming out of the Emory, but if they'd kick a generator on up there at, on the Clinch River at Melton Hill Dam, they might could get this stuff moving maybe. Looks better up through here. Maybe we can get a cast out. But anyway, this camera I'm filming with today, it's a DJI Osmo Action 4. And it has a bigger sensor than the GoPro that I've been using. And it's supposed to help really in low light situations like we've got out here today. So I'd like to get some feedback from my regular viewers that you've, you've watched my, some of my other videos and you're seeing this one today. Give me some feedback and let me know, is, this, is the video quality any better with this camera than my GoPro? Just leave a comment down there and let me know what you think. Be honest too, I mean, you ain't gonna hurt my feelings. If we need to go back to the old camera, we go back to the old camera. I mean, it don't matter to me. This, this time of year in the fall, what I like to do is experiment with stuff a little more. New gear, new tactics and stuff, because this time of year, the YouTube views for fishing channels, at least especially mine, just fall off. It just drops way down between hunting season and football season and kids back to school. The the views just drop significantly. And so it kind of, while that's unfortunate that that happens, the silver lining is that it gives me an opportunity to try some new stuff without having to worry so much about getting top quality content you know if i if i come out here today for instance and trying out this new camera and i've messed up something on the settings and i get home and my footage is messed up well no big deal whereas spring and summer when i'm actually getting views it would be a bigger deal so anyway trying out this new camera dji action osmo 4 and it's got the bigger sensor which is hopefully helping get better footage right now during this low light period it's also this is one of the big features that GoPro has never gotten right. This camera is stated to never overheat. You can run it continuously and it won't shut down from overheating. So that's something I've struggled a lot with, with the GoPro, especially when it's super hot or I'm filming on sunny days or that direct sun's beating down on that camera, it fries it. And so this one, supposedly doesn't do that so i'm curious to try that out and another thing too and it don't really have anything to do with with filming the actual video for y'all's purposes but it's a big deal to me is this camera saves files in bigger sizes uh, it's up to 16 gigabytes per file so you don't when you get home to edit again i know this don't pertain to to y'all here unless you got your own uh, YouTube channels, whatever. But when you get home and you're rocking a GoPro or the older DJI models, you got all these files that are only a few minutes long because it saves it, it would save it in such small chunks. So having the larger file, I'm hoping today when I get home, this entire video will be in one file. 
That would make it so much simpler from getting it from the camera to my computer. So anyway, basically, I'm asking y'all for some help to give me some feedback. Let me know if this camera's any good or not down in the comment box because I'm fortunate I got access to this thing here for a couple days and we're gonna try to, I'm gonna try to do an ultralight video with it today and probably I'm gonna try to do a carp video with it, kind of do like a, a long video here so I can see the file sizes and then do uh, like a normal carp, maybe a catfish video, I don't know, we'll see on the other one. Problem is, you know, obviously I'm not fishing tomorrow because it's Saturday and between the bass boat tournaments and the Vol Navy people, they can have it. Sunday, all them Vol Navy people will be coming back, but I can go hide from them in a creek somewhere and go carp fishing. So anyway, we're trying out this new camera, y'all. So we got a lot going on, but what we don't have going on right now is fish catching. Where are the dang fish at? We got bit there, second cast. Nothing since. Although we ain't hardly been able to make a good cast since because of this dang slop here on the water. I'm gonna adjust this camera too. We got it on a different mount. There we go. There's one. I went to pick up on it and he had it. Boy, he's a hitting and a getting it too, ain't he? All right, we got another fish here. We found an area we could cast to and magically we get bit. <laughs> Come here, fish. These leaves are protecting y'all today. Come here, fishy. He ate it a little bit deep. I think he's gonna be okay. You got lucky, fish. You got that thing any deeper, you'd have been in trouble. The fish that he's been in trouble his whole life. His entire life he's been in trouble. Fish says he's a bad boy. Yeah, I hope we catch some fish today, y'all. I'm, I'm needing to fish in a bad way. For those of you seeing, I don't know when you're seeing this video, but I filmed a live stream last night. Boy, look at him going, oh, oh, we just got, oh, that was a muskie that come after him. Did you see that? I hope that got on camera. Oh my gosh, there was a muskie that come after him. Ho, ho, ho. This bluegill is the luckiest bluegill alive. He just had his life flash before his eyes. Wow. Dang, old muskie. I hope that got on camera, man. I hope this new... I hope this new camera with the bigger sensor, good and low light allegedly, we're gonna see if we could see that fish with it. Bluegill, how do you feel right now? You ain't got a mark on you, I think he missed you. Oh man, Bluegill, he almost, we'd have never, we'd have never got a hold of that thing on this ultralight and two pound line. He had a bit right through it with them teeth. We do have some muskie out here on the Emory River. They are in Watts Bar Reservoir, which the Emory here flows into. So, ho, 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 ho. Business picked up right there, y'all. Business picked up. You never know when you're reeling in. It's funny, I've said this before in these other ultralight videos, but these fish all live in harmony together down there. That bluegill, was swimming close by that muskie over there. Everybody's living their best life. But when one of these fish gets out of line and starts acting crazy, that's when things go bad. That's when, that's when these neighbors turn on each other over there. And I hooked that bluegill, he started swimming erratically, and that muskie says, dinner time, or breakfast time in this case. Oh man, that's the first time I've ever had a muskie come after a fish that I was reeling in. I've, I've had bass come after them numerous times. Just, uh, when was it, August I guess? When I was over in North Carolina. 
I was over there for that catfish tournament. And I was getting some bait under a dock and, and I had a couple bass eat a bluegill as I was reeling in. I wasn't able to land the bass, but they physically ate the bluegill and I was fighting it until they ended up spitting it. That happens, you know, the bass will come up semi-regularly. I mean, it happens several times every year. But that's the first time I've ever had a muskie do that before. I've only caught one muskie in my entire life. I was fishing with a, a fellow named Corey Allen. He used to have a muskie guide service here in East Tennessee. I'd become friends with him a few years ago. He, I, he ended up moving. I don't know where he's at now. But he had took me out and I got my first muskie with him, my first and only muskie. Got on a topwater plug. And that was a pretty awesome experience, but that right there got my heart rate up. He was after it, buddy. He just missed him. I don't have the patience to be a musky fisherman. They call them a fish of 10,000 casts. Y'all know how I am on these ultralight videos. If I make about 10 casts and I ain't got a bite, I'm, I'm, I'm losing patience, you know. I just ain't... I don't think I could be a musky fisherman. Not to mention just how just physically tiresome it is to throw them big baits on the on the big heavy tackle all day long. Them guys that can go out there and sling them big baits for eight and 10, 12 hours, I don't know how the hell they do it. When I fished with Corey that day, man, I was, I was over it. <laughs> it was fun catching that muskie, but boy, just just the throwing them big baits forever with what feels like no hope to ever catch one. Just ain't for me. But a fun accidental catch, that would be cool. I think we're gonna have to move on from this little area here, y'all, because look, look at all this mess here. I'm trying to cast over. Now it seems to be moving in this way, but right up here beyond it, which you may not be able to see with the fog, it looks like it's a clear patch right up here. So we'll go up here and see if we can make a cast. This video today may end up having less fish than a normal ultralight video just because of the the slop on the water. It's that time of year. I love fall. Beautiful time in East Tennessee with all the leaves turning and stuff, but when ultralight fishing, it, it can be, it can be a challenge because sometimes you'll cast and your, your line will be laying on top of a leaf and it'll stop the fall because your jigs are so light. These 164th ounce jigs, they just, they don't weigh anything. The buoyancy of the, of the leaf on the top of the water will stop the jig from falling. And so it, you, can, you can cast exactly where you want to bait and think you're going to put it on a fish's head and then it never get down to them because of the leaf. Hopefully we're gonna run out of this stuff here in a little bit. It looks like the water's moving this way. They may have they may have kicked a generator on over there at the dam. We do have one fish here coming. It's another nice bluegill. We ain't gonna be able to measure no bluegill today because I, I left my measuring board in the car. I realized that once I got out here and it was too late at that point. I wasn't going back for it. So if any of these bluegill, if they want to figure out how long they are, they're out of luck. They're going to have to take their chances biting another fisherman's line. I got another one right here. That's two in a row. We get over here where we can actually cast to some open water over there. <laughs> we catching some fish. I got to pull him in through the slop, though. Come here, bluegill. Let me get hold of you.
Got any more musky over there, bluegill? You seen any of them? Muskies probably what bluegill have nightmares about. They musky, I mean, they're a big fish out here. They're one of the biggest fish, obviously catfish and stripers or other big game options that we have here where I live. But the musky, they get really big too and they just don't have a big, a, a big following of people who target them. And this is a massive bluegill right here. Look at this. Look at this bluegill, y'all. If I had my board, this one would be going on it. Because I bet you this one here is every bit of eight inches. Look at the size of him, man. Look how thick he is. Nice. That is a nice bluegill right there. That makes me happy, y'all. I was trying to say that earlier, I think the muskie interrupted me. But I was trying to say the live stream that I did trying to catch a carp was filmed last night for my regular viewers. I don't know when you're seeing this video. I'll probably, I'll probably throw this video in between some catfish videos there just to kind of break things up. But I filmed that live stream last night. I went carp fishing. I was hoping to catch some carp because I ain't been able to catch any in a couple months. You know, I ain't been carp fishing. I've been doing some catfishing and traveling and stuff. And so I really had a hankering to go catch me some carp. I wanted to get me some. I didn't catch any. Got two channel cats, that's all I got. So I said, I wanna come out here today and do some ultralight fishing and, and actually catch some dang fish and redeem myself. Every time I struggle to catch a fish, whatever I'm doing, I like to go ultralight fishing because it's a good way to boost your confidence. Because even if you screw this up, you're still gonna get a bunch of bites. I mean, we're out here today in, in absolute slop around me here, and we're still catching some fish and getting some nice ones too. Let's see squirrels up here. Let's see if this camera will show you these squirrels up in the tree. Look at one, he's on the tip of that branch. He's liable to fall out that tree. What's he doing up there? That squirrel, man, he's, he's flirting with kamikazeism being on the tip of that branch like that out over this water. We get a squirrel in this kayak somehow. I'm probably I'm probably coming out of this kayak. They're like little rats. I just if if we had a squirrel come in here, I'd just assume it had the rabies. I'd probably just let them have this thing. <laughs> I can't stand them old squirrels. I've mentioned in there how destructive they are at my house with the bird feeders and stuff. Although fortunately lately, they've kind of left my bird feeders alone for the time being. I don't know what I've done to deserve the, the, uh, the privilege of them leaving me alone, but they ain't been too much of a nuisance lately. Yeah, they've definitely, they've kicked the generator on or something. We got some water movement through here now. I'm gonna get myself spun a little bit here and we're gonna go up here by this rock wall some more. You know, I'm in my old town kayak today, so I don't have a graph. Can't tell you water depth, water temperature, all that other stuff that people worry about but don't really matter. I can't tell you any of that stuff. But I can tell you just from just from being having my hands, you know, wet and stuff and handling these fish, water temperature is definitely dropping. These cooler nights has really started to get the water temperature on the decline. Hold on, let me clear my petals out. We've got leaves in them here. There we go. I th Boy, it looks like, I know we can barely see through the fog. It looks like wide open water up here. I hope all this, all this slop right here, I hope we're about to leave it behind. That's gonna make 
That's gonna make our lives so much easier if we are. Man, I tell you what though, the quality of bluegill this morning, so far with the, the few that we've caught have been superb. I fished this area, I can't remember when. A couple months ago, I guess, I come down here and <clears throat> done one of these raw and uncut videos. I like to fish this area two or three times a year usually. Here's another big bluegill. Man, this is another tank right here, buddy. Look at this. Come here, bluegill. Let's get a hold of you now. Look at the colors on this one. It's got like pink and purple. A pretty thing right there. Another nice one though. Really nice bluegill. I'm just letting this gulp. I just, they're hitting it on the fall. That's how I catch the bulk of these fish. Just cast it out, let it fall down. And like right here, for instance, this cliff wall, it just comes straight down. Having fished here before with a graph, it's, we're probably sitting in 15, 20 feet right here, just where I'm at, this distance away from the, from that wall. So, I mean, it gets deep really quick, but then bluegill and clearly the musky and bass and stuff, they'll hang out on these rocks. You got all those little, like, like almost overhang areas creates like a roof for them. And they'll get up under there right against, tight against that wall. And you get bait fish swim by, or in our case here, this gulp falling down real slow, like an injured minnow. Well, they just, they just jut out from that wall and snatch it. I'm gonna fish a few hours this morning. I got some dirt coming today. I gotta be home to receive. I'm very excited about this load of dirt I'm getting. I got holes all over my yard. I, I'd had some trees cleared. It's been several years. I don't remember how many years now, but several years ago. And the root systems in them trees that were cleared, I guess they have finally reached the point of deterioration that they are creating holes in my yard. And so i am got this dirt coming in and I'm going to go around them holes and kind of pack them. That way when I'm mowing and stuff, I don't, I don't hit them lee or them holes. Mowing season's about over at this point in the year, but I still got a, I don't rake leaves. I got a little over three acres of yard. I got four acres total, three of its yard. And so I don't rake three acres of leaves. I, I take the mower and go over them and mulch them up. And I don't want to be hitting them holes with the mower, especially my new mower. I didn't care about the old mower. It was on its last days anyway, but my new mower I just got last month. I don't want to be messing it up, hitting these holes. So. Very excited about this dirt I'm getting. My $300 dirt, that's how much it costs to get a load brought in. I got some sifted topsoil. It's not supposed to have any rocks in it. We'll see if it actually don't. I hear a boat coming. I hope they ain't coming over here to fish. I'd like to have this whole stretch of bank to myself. They can go anywhere in that boat. They're probably gonna try to come right over here. Them bass fishermen though, they ain't gonna, they probably ain't gonna catch nothing, one and two, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna interfere with us. We can go right behind them with this finesse technique and catch fish right there behind them. I had teased my regular audience with some bass fishing tournament videos. Unfortunately, I fished one of the two tournaments I was talking about. I skunked in it, couldn't, couldn't buy a fish. 
So no video from that tournament. And then the second tournament, I decided not to fish. So I teased you, I lied to you. Normally, normally I only lie to women, but I've lied to all of you this time. I gave it my best shot during that tournament that I did fish though. I just couldn't, I just couldn't get a bite. I threw everything to the kitchen sink. I was, started out with spinner bait, I threw top water some. I ended up throwing a worm and a jig and a crankbait. I had hoped to just throw a spinner bait for the entire tournament, but I, after about three hours of that, I was like, yeah, this ain't, this ain't bad out. I better go to plan B. I started trying other things and just didn't, wasn't my day. Oh, hell, these people over here right behind me. They got the whole damn river. They're going to get right behind me. That's all right. Maybe we'll show them how to catch a muskie over here before it's said and done. <laughs> I still can't believe that dang muskie. I'll be talking about that all week. I hope it got on camera. I don't know with the low light and the angle of the camera, with this new camera, I don't know if I got it positioned right to be able to see. But I hope, I hope we got some footage of that. Yeah, these fellas right behind me. I hope they go the other way. Been a while now since we got a fish too. We'll keep making our way down through here. We're just gonna take a big stretch of this bank today and work it all the way down. We'll eventually come across some more. Winds nice and calm right now, but I sure hope it don't pick up because it's a little bit chilly. Flip flops. I used to, you know, love to wear my flip flops out here doing these videos, but that that season's long gone. It's boot weather now. Here's a fish. I got a hoodie on today too. I'm gonna have to make a beach trip just to bust out the flip flops again. This is another good one right here. Another good one right there, man. Sorry, Bluegill, I left my measuring board in the car. You out of luck. He's so disappointed in me. I broke his heart. All he wanted was a measurement on this, on this YouTube video. To show his parents how big he's gotten. He's been drinking his milk and taking his vitamins and doing all the right things and we'll never know. I'll try to catch him again someday. If that muskie don't get him first. There's no, oh, I had another one. Let me let it sink back down. I missed that one. I went to pick up on it and had a fish. There's a big splash down there. Crap. Let's throw over there again. We got some fish over there. Thought there was some over there. Caught that one and got hit again. Well, just the tease. Oh good, them, them guys are going the other way. Good. I ain't, I ain't trying to interact with people today, y'all. I'm gonna interact with y'all through this video, but that's it. I already know I gotta talk to the guy delivering dirt at my house today, so that's that's pushing my 
human interaction limits. Man can only do so much, you know. Here's one. Get caught up with him here. This and here, he's he's a year or two away from being as big as his friends that we've got. If he survives that long. Oh, 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 oh. hang on, bluegill, hang on. Hang on up out of here. You can see the regular viewers here. Look what I've done, at least for the time being, anyway. I took me some bungee cords and I run through these pockets in my gear tracks here on both sides. I did that because yesterday I realized I had lost my pickup of gulp minnows out the kayak. I guess it bounced out of the pocket going down the road and it fell down my pedal drive slot. So I take my pedal drive out when I'm traveling and I lost my dang, lost my dang gulp minnows. I had to put another cup of them in here and I said, you know what, I'm gonna try to rig something up so that I don't lose any more of them ever again. And so that's the best solution I've come up with for the time being. We'll see how it works out. I was thinking about it last night on the way home from doing that live stream and I was like, you know, maybe I could put me a magnet in the bottom of them trays. I got this other magnet over here. I put my, my jig heads on and stuff. And so, I could put me a magnet potentially in there and maybe glue like a piece of metal or something to the bottom of that cup and it would stick to the to the magnet and keep things from bouncing out. My pedal drive has got a little little pocket here, a little cubby that I keep some gear in. But I don't want to put that that gulp minnow jar in there because you know I don't want everything getting liquid on it and stuff. The pea cup, I use them urine specimen cups there to store them gulp minnows because they don't leak. But the jar, the, the cup does get a little, it does get some of the, the juice around it and stuff just when I'm taking the gulp out, you know, periodically on a fishing trip. So they get kind of, it gets kind of nasty and I don't want to put that down there in that in that pedal drive cubby while I'm storing other stuff in there, you know. So I'd like to keep them right there inside that pocket and I'd like to leave them there when I'm transporting a kayak to and from home. So we're gonna figure out a way to make it happen. Good, them guys around the corner now, we're done with them. You all know I don't like talking on camera around people and stuff. It throws off my game. Fortunately, today I can talk a little bit lower and you all still hear me, hopefully, because I got this DJI. Not only am I trying out their, their action camera, I'm trying out their microphone, too. It plugs directly into the camera. And then I got a little piece that I clip on my life jacket here. So hopefully the audio will be better in this video than what y'all normally get from me. I don't know this microphone system. I don't know that I wanna, oh, oh, that bluegill's gone. He said he ain't coming in this kayak listening about no dang camera microphones. He didn't wanna hear that and y'all don't either, but I'm telling you anyway. But these uh, camera mic, I tried out microphones in 2022 most of those videos was filmed with my other microphone, the, the Rode wireless mic. And the audio is great when you've got, a, when you've got an external mic. The, the microphones and the GoPro and really any of these action cameras, it, it's just not very good. So these other microphones that you plug into them gives you a lot better audio. The problem with it is is well a couple things one you got you got more batteries to charge because you got to do the microphone and the transmitter battery you got to plug both things in and when i'm doing longer trips like let's say i'm fishing a tournament that's eight hours long well the microphone battery don't last eight hours 
So I got, you know, midway through the tournament, I got to take everything off the camera because I don't know how this DJI mic works, but with the GoPro, when I had the Rode mic plugged into it, if the microphone died, the GoPro camera's microphone would not just automatically take up back over. So what you'd end up with is you would just you would just lose audio. You just wouldn't <laughs> you'd get home and and you just wouldn't have anything. It'd just be like on mute. And I also had other problems throughout the year. I lost a bunch of footage where I would get home and, and just not have any audio. And I guess while I'd be fighting a fish or something, maybe I would bump the camera and knock the cord loose or just jar it just enough, you know, so it wasn't where it wasn't fully connected to the camera. And I'd get home just not have any audio. And so I finally just said heck with it. You know, I, it just wasn't worth the hassle. And so even if this microphone has amazing audio, which I assume it probably is, I don't know that I would stick with it, even if y'all like it, just because of the hassle. But you watch and see, people will be commenting on how my voice sounds different with this microphone. When I, here's another fish. When I switched from my other mic back to just the standard GoPro mic, my video comment box was full of people claiming, it was conspiracy theorists, claiming that I was faking my voice, faking my accent, uh, that I was ashamed of where I'm from and trying to sound different. I mean, like it was just ridiculous. And it was all because, <laughs> because I sounded different on the GoPro microphone versus the other microphone. I guess I sound more Southern on a better quality microphone than what I do on the on the normal action camera microphone. So anyway, it was about it was about stupid as what it was. And you know, if one person or two people had commented something about it, big deal. I wouldn't have thought anything. But I probably had 15, 20 comments from people accusing me of like faking my voice and faking an accent and all this stuff. I mean, it was about ridiculous. But that's what had changed. I had went from using the road mic to just the standard GoPro mic. And yeah, you know, I can tell what, you know, when I'd edit the video stuff, like I can tell the difference between the two. I mean, it's pretty obvious. These action camera microphones, the, the quality just doesn't compare to a external mic system. But I, I mean, I didn't think that it was like changing an accent or anything, but <laughs> those people were convinced, man. Some of them were pissed off at me too. Like, you're not proud to be from the South anymore. I'm like, you're an idiot. I talk how I talk. I sound how I sound. I laugh how I laugh. I ain't, I ain't trying to be no ventriloquist out here. I'm just trying to catch a damn fish. You know, I ain't worried about how I sound. Now here's what's even dumber about those people and their, in their conspiracy theories. Even if I had the ability to change how I sound, to change my accent, why the hell would I want to? My entire audience is southeastern United States. Like, um, I mean, seriously, uh, I'm, when you look at my demographics, you know, YouTube monitors everything. They can tell you everything about us, everything about you all from a broad, like, you know, broad level. I, I know, I know where you are at, how long you watch, where you click off the videos. I mean, YouTube, they track all that crap. So when you look at the demographics of where my audience lives, it is overwhelmingly Southeastern United States. There's some, you know, you'll get some random blips just, you know, overseas. Uh, different countries. They show up on the live streams. Yesterday in the live stream, we had like Russia, South Africa, Philippines. I mean, we had, you know, we had people all kinds of different countries. Oh, oh boy, this bluegill's in my, well, he's right there between my leg. Get out of there, bluegill. I don't want need to be finned down there now. Bluegill's right there trying to cripple me. But, you know, you get a, you'll get an occasional person from somewhere way off. 
but the overwhelming majority is southeastern United States. So why the hell would I, why would it, it wouldn't be good for business. Even if I had the ability to change my accent, it would not be good for business to do so. Why, why would I do that? Why would I want to sound different from all of the people who are watching my video? It just wouldn't make sense. So, anyway, most of those conspiracy theorists who were pestering me, accusing me of changing my voice, this, that, that all of them people got blocked because I can't stand, you know, I, I mean, there's a lot of people I don't like in this world. I don't like rude people. I don't like people who beat animals, you know. There's a lot of groups of people I don't like, but one of the big groups that I can't stand is stupid people. And if you so damn stupid that you would think I would change my accent, you just, you ain't somebody I need to be interacting with. <laughs> it just ain't gonna work out. There's no good that's gonna come from that. So anyway, all those people are gone. The conspiracy theorists think I'm changing my voice. They're all gone. But if I go from this fancy microphone in the camera today, back to stock microphone that's in either this camera or the GoPro. You watch and see people will be swearing up and down. I'm changing my voice. Oh, thumped it right there, man. This fish right here, I, I knocked the voice out of him while I set that hook down. This fish right here, he'll go to the, he'll go to a concert tonight. He won't be able to sing along with them after what I just done to him. Ain't that something about people? Here's something else I'll go on a, a tangent about. About just people in general. Why is it that when people go to, you go to a concert, you pay a ridiculous amount of money for a concert ticket. Well, depending on who the, the artist is. Here's another fish too. It's two in a row right here. Maybe this fish can tell us what I'm trying to get out here. He may have an answer for us. But like this fish here, he spends a a thousand dollars to go get him a nosebleed seat at, at Taylor Swift or something, right? And then the whole concert where you've paid a ridiculous amount of money. I ain't first off, I ain't paying a thousand dollars to see anybody, but that fish would. He'd pay a thousand dollars to go see Taylor Swift. But they pay all that money for a concert ticket, to go see and listen to an artist sing their favorite songs. There's another fish. And then they spend the entire concert treating it like a damn karaoke bar. They're in the, they're there in the audience singing the songs that they're there to see the artists sing. It's like, why don't they just shut up and listen to the show? I don't get it. Do you understand it, bluegill? It's a big bluegill right here. He don't get it either. It's like if you just want to have karaoke night, you can go to some crappy bar and sing you some Taylor Swift songs. You don't need to spend $1,000 to get you a nosebleed seat to go sing Taylor Swift songs. You know, I think I'd, I think I'd go, go to a concert. Some, somebody's calling my phone here. Who is that? Yeah, we ain't picking that up. That's a spam. That's a spam call right there interrupting our show. I felt it buzzing under my seat. We got another bluegill. This is another good one right here too. Come over here bluegill. They're right here on the corner of this rock. Look at this one right here, man. Look at this, buddy. Look at the size of this thing right here. Holy cow, look at this thing, man. Look at that. Wow. That's a nice one right there. Man, oh man. Get on out of here, bluegill. That might have been a shell cracker. I didn't see any red on him. But the colorations on him there, he, he may have been a shell cracker possibly. Either way, a nice one. Keep throwing over. I lost. I lost count. We were talking about these people spending a fortune to go have karaoke night at a Taylor Swift concert, and I lost count of how many fish in a row that was. 
But yeah, why the hell do people spend? I'm trying to think the last concert I went to. Here's another fish too. I don't know how many, I don't know how many fish in a row that we've caught, but here's another one for the streak. I think the last concert I went to was probably the Goo Goo Dolls, I think. I think that was probably, it was either the Goo Goo Dolls or Travis Tritt. But same deal, you know, you there, you there to enjoy the show and hear them sing, the, you know, your favorite songs from when I was a teenager. And Madge over here beside you and Billy Jean over here to your left, they're, they're belting out their tunes as loud as they can possibly sing it, and it's terrible. I mean, they'd be booed off the stage by a bunch of drunk people at the karaoke bar, but boy, they've, they've paid their $80 to see the Goo Goo Dolls, and they're singing Iris to the top of their lungs, you know? I don't get it. I, I don't get it. You won't see me singing. We broke our streak right there. Whatever streak we was on, we just broke it. But you see me go to a concert, and I rarely do. I ain't going to be singing nobody's songs. I'm just going to listen and enjoy the show. I'm not a big enough music fan that I'm going to pay much money. You wouldn't see me paying no thousand dollars to go to no concert. I don't care who it is. There ain't really no concerts that I want to go to know how. I wouldn't mind seeing Jelly Roll maybe. I kind of like his stuff. Lost Dog Street Band's pretty good. It just hasn't worked out. Lost Dog Street Band has come to Knoxville a couple times in recent years. One of them, the show, I was able to go to it, but the show got canceled because of the Benjamin Todd. I think he got sick. Maybe he got COVID or something. Anyway, it got canceled and postponed to a date that I couldn't go to it. And then there was another time I had actually bought tickets and some, something happened and I couldn't go. So I actually spent the money on tickets and didn't get to use them. But yeah, that was another one I would eventually like to see in concert. But I just think many people out there, I'm going to pay money to go see they sound better on the radio anyhow. And then you don't, you know, you listen to them on the radio, you don't have to, you don't have to hear Sally Sue two seats down singing at the top of her lungs like she's in the damn shower. Oh my gosh, look at this. What the heck has happened here? Well, we got a line mess here, y'all. Bear with me a second here. We raw and uncut people here. This is the kind of crap that happens. All right. I think we, we got it straightened out there. Had a little, little line malfunction, a little line twist. I guess even my fishing line got scared when that muskie come through. <laughs> Speaking of Taylor Swift, so, yeah, I'm a big football fan. I watch a lot of NFL games. And, you know, she's been, I guess, dating Travis Kelsey, who's Chiefs tight end and whatnot. And the NFL, they're soaking it up, man. They're, they're enjoying every speck of attention they're getting from Taylor Swift's people. But I'm about damn sick of seeing it. You know, enough already. I tune in to watch football. I don't need to be seeing Taylor Swift in the stands. I watched part of that Thursday night game there with Kansas City and Denver. And I think they showed Taylor three times in the first quarter. You know, I don't, I don't get it. I used to kind of have a thing for Taylor Swift. 
But now that they're showing her all over the TV set on my NFL games, it kind of it kind of takes away it kind of takes away a little something from her. And then the fact, listen, and I know women are all about some Travis Kelsey right now. And I know he's a big football star, you know, yada, yada, yada. But he's got that stupid looking state trooper mustache, which is all the trend now. I, I, I don't understand why anybody, if you're going to grow a mustache, you better grow full on Burt Reynolds, 1970, Smokey and the Bandit. You better be rocking that. Not some, not some North Carolina state trooper type mustache. So the fact that Taylor Swift likes somebody that's going to rock a mustache like that just takes away something. I reckon if she ever calls me, I'll probably still pick up the phone. But I'm just saying, you know, I don't understand these women wanting to, wanting to date a man that's got one of them silly looking mustaches. I don't know how that became a trend all of a sudden. They look ridiculous. I ain't doing it. I don't know that I could grow a mustache anyway. I'd look like a I'd look like I got the mange or something. I don't think it'd all fill in. Probably hell it probably has so much gray in it at this point. I'd have to get some get some of that just for me and hair color to color it with, and I'm too cheap for that. Like I said, it's about to about to kill me I had to buy some dirt today. <laughs> I ain't buying no just for me and hair color to color a state trooper looking mustache. I mean who the hell likes state troopers? No offense to any state troopers watching. I got a couple that watch these videos. But, you know, I mean, even they know, the, the state troopers who watch my videos, they know nobody likes them. There's never been one state trooper on the face of the earth that somebody likes. Because all they do is give you tickets. You go down, you go down the interstate here in Tennessee, your butthole puckers every time you pull up on a state trooper. Because you know... They about to clock you doing 80 and a 70. You know it. And you about to get a ticket. Nobody likes state troopers. So why the hell would people, outside of maybe a Halloween costume, why would anybody want to grow a mustache like a, like a state trooper? I don't get it. I think the more, the longer I live, the less I understand about people. Between the the karaokers who spend an ungodly amount of money to go to concerts. And now, I mean, you know, Travis Kelsey, he's a successful man. He's a rich, successful man. He, he's had a, a heck of a run there in the NFL. Probably one of, if not the best tight end of all time. You know, that's saying something. The NFL's been around a long time, and for him to be the best at his position, at least in the conversation to be the best of all time, that's saying something. So he's clearly got some skill. He's got some brains about him. But he's grown that stupid mustache. I don't get it. It's like that, though. The longer I live, the less I understand about people. That's why it's best I just keep to myself. I'll come out here and fish these morning hours, try to avoid people as much as possible. Just me and as many fish as I can catch, and I go home. That's, that's, a, that's the way to live your life. If you're an old introvert like me, I don't want to jinx it. But we've been a long time on this video now, and I ain't had to retie. I ain't snagged one time. I think there was one trip, I can't remember when it was recently, where I went an entire raw and uncut, unedited video and didn't have to retie. It was the first time that ever happened. We do probably need to switch out this gulp at some point though. Get a fresh one on there that's got some got some more juice and some scent in it. How long have we been live now? We're on this video. 
All right, pretty good while. One thing we will, this video I guess won't be technically fully uncut because this camera, one of the things they, that DJI touts about this camera is how good the battery life is. And so I'm putting that to the test today. I'm not running this on a battery pack. Normally when I'm doing these videos, I got my camera plugged into a battery pack. That way we can just run for the length of the trip, you know, unless it overheats. But today I wanted to see how long these batteries last. So at some point we'll have to, here's a fish, we'll have to switch out a battery on this thing. So far we're doing good with it. You gotta give this camera the full test, you know. Be curious to see what y'all say about it in the comments. Again, it don't really matter to me. I've, you know, I'm gonna use whatever camera y'all think is is has the better quality. I mean, it's y'all the ones watching the videos, not me. I'm gonna rig the camera up the same way, regardless. So. These larger file sizes potentially will be helpful for me. That'll be the biggest help when I'm editing the videos. I will probably not use the microphone regardless, even though I know I'm, I have no doubts everybody's going to say the audio is better in this video just because of the external mic, because that's, I know this microphone's better than any standard microphone in a camera for sure but probably not gonna keep using it regardless. Here's another one. There's a piece of wood right here that comes down in the water right there. We just got this fish on it. And it's another good bluegill right here. Come over here, bluegill. You better come up here fast, quit resisting now. You might have a muskie on your tail. That's another fat one, man. They're feeding up. This water temperature's dropping. These things are feeding up. Thick bluegill right there. I like catching them like that. Good to catch a fish after last night, going live, trying to catch a carp, and and not catching diddly doo doo other than a couple channel cats that don't even count. It's nice to come out here and catch a bunch of fish. I'm telling you, ultralight fishing will boost your confidence. If you're struggling to catch fish, pull out your ultralight rod and some gulp and you will, you will feel better about your fishing ability before you leave the water that day. It's a definite confidence booster. I had one hit me and swimming with it and he spit it. I think there's some small fish over there by that tree too. Make another cast over here. There's one. Yeah, there's a bunch of fish on that tree. Another good one right here too. Tell us something about yourself, Bluegill. What's your What's your plans for today? You gotta do some shopping or something, get your oil change maybe. That fish right there, he's gonna take him a trip to service merchandise. They went out of business for us humans, but they still got them down there in the bluegill world. Y'all remember service merchandise? It was a store, I don't know how widespread they were. We had one in Tennessee when I was a kid. It was kind of like a Walmart, I guess. Here's another fish. They went out of business. I had honestly forgot all about them, but I was on uh, social media the other day and I was scrolling through and I come across this G.I. Joe fan page. And when I was a kid growing up in the 80s, G.I. Joe was like my primary toy. Like I, I had a gazillion of them. I'd build forts with them out in the woods and stuff and play with them in the creeks and 
you know, that, that was my primary tool. I got to pull off this tree a little bit here. I'm blowing up on it. Let me spin around. But anyway, I was a big, you know, G.I. Joe nerd as a kid. And so I was scrolling through social media the other day and I come across this G.I. Joe fan page and it had, it had like pictures of like G.I. Joe still in the packages and it would show you the back of the box and uh, like, like uh, when I was a kid, some of y'all remember this there that's my age and older, but in a stores, when, when I was a kid, they would often have these end caps on the toy aisles and they would have a display set up with the toys like out of the package in like some battle scene or something. And uh, you probably couldn't do that nowadays because one, kids don't play with action figures anymore and two, they'd, they'd steal them probably. But anyway, they had some pictures of that on there and then they had some catalog pictures. Because again, when I was a kid, we didn't have internet, you had a, you had catalogs. Every year the Sears would come out with their Christmas catalog and you'd look at all the toys in there and you know they'd be set up in these battle scenes and stuff and and uh, it was cool because you know you didn't again when I was a kid there wasn't no internet you didn't have nothing like that so that's what you had. But anyway one of the things on this G.I. Joe fan page was a service merchandise ad. And I'd forgotten all about service merchandise. It was just, it went out of business. I guess it went out of business when I was a kid. But that page, it was kind of, it was neat seeing all them old toys and stuff that I had as a kid. I still got them actually, they're down there at my parents' house. But uh, yeah, it was neat seeing all that stuff and seeing them, them old catalog ads and and all that it's amazing how many stores though in my lifetime have went out of business this bluegill he's he, that fish right there said he's never even been to a store he don't know what we're talking about but it's amazing how many things have went out of business in my life like service merchandise being an example but you know i just mentioned sears they had to when i was a kid that sears catalog i mean that was that was a really big deal. And I think the Sears catalog, I mean, people have talked about it for years. It was just, it was one of those things. It was a staple at Christmas time, you know. But Sears, out of business. Uh, my first job as a teenager was at Kmart. I was a cashier. I was 16, making $5.20 an hour. And thought I was rich because minimum wage at the time was five fifteen, and I got five twenty an hour. And I thought, man, I'm making a nickel more than minimum wage. I've I've made it in life. But Kmart out of business, and I had it. I did have it made in life back then. I mean, because back in those days, this would have been 1998, and I was 16. You know, I could go work 20, 20, 25 hours a week at Kmart, you know, working weekends and a couple five to 10 shifts during the week. And I had enough money to put gas in the vehicle, eat at the McDonald's, you know, because gas was under a dollar a gallon back then. And you could get a extra value meal at the McDonald's for under $5, it'd be $4.99. So, I was living high on the hog back in them days, but Kmart now, out of business. There was another store when I was a kid called Hills Department Store, out of business. We had a, we had a Revco they're gone. I think CVS, I think, bought them and shut them down. Um, you know, it's just amazing how much stuff has went under. Circuit City, gone. Blockbuster, movie store. Oh, hell, all the video rental movie stores, they're gone. 
it's amazing, you know, and you think about, you think about, I mean, these were, these were dominant companies back in the day. At least, I mean, they seemed to be anyway as a kid. I remember, you know, when I was 16 there, working at Kmart in the break room, they'd have the Kmart stock price posted. And, you know, I remember one of the managers or assistant managers there telling me one time about how much stock he had in Kmart and how he was going to retire off that. I guess he's done got him another job by now since his retirement went belly up. But, you know, those were dominant companies back in the day, and they're just gone now. And it makes you wonder where we're going to be at in society, say, another 10 years from now, 20 years from now. How many companies that are thriving today are going to be completely just gone in 10 or 20 years? Whether it be just competition has put them out or maybe like in the case of, uh, you know, Blockbuster, nobody rents movies anymore. Nobody rents DVDs. Everything's online. You can, you can get on Netflix or YouTube or Amazon and, you know, rent a movie on there. You know, we just had, you know, I live in East Tennessee we just had AMC movie theaters recently close all their theaters down here in Knoxville. There may be one open maybe still, but the, um, the main one there in Knoxville, it shut down. And they used to have one in Windsor Square that we, we called it the dollar movie. Used to, you could go see Movies, after they had been out a long time, you could go there and see them for a dollar. It ended up, I think the last one I went to see there was like 250 inflation, you know. Dollar went to 250 but nevertheless, uh, it was an AMC theater, and it's gone. And so now, you want to go see a movie in Knoxville, you got to go to the Regal. But there's been talk of maybe them going out too. And so, it makes you wonder, like... 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Will we still have movie theaters? Will people still go to that? Look at this rat over here, or a chipmunk. He was down in that water and he went running up there. He's still, he's up there on that cliff. We'll see if the quality of the camera here, we'll see if it'll show that little chipmunk, by gosh. But yeah, it's just crazy to think about how much stuff is just gone. How much stuff has just disappeared in my lifetime. So much change. You know, when I was a kid, like I said, I had G.I. Joes and that was my main toy that I played with as a kid. But I had other action figures too, Ninja Turtles, uh, when I was real little, I had He-Man and uh, Thundercats. Silverhawks were were cool for a little while. Uh, I had I had wrestling figure. Every type of wrestling figure that ever come out, I had. You know, that was back when wrestling was watchable back in the in the eighties. But nowadays, kids don't. They don't play with action figures anymore. That's one of them things that just kind of kind of went away. I mean, you go to the every time I go to Walmart, I usually I'll take a stroll down through the through the toy department aisles, just take a look. But you don't ever see any kids there. You know, when I was at the Kmart there when I was sixteen, one of the things we had to do. Boy, that fish jumped up right there. Was that a carp? I tried so hard last night to catch a carp on that live stream, couldn't do it. And I think one just come up right there and flip me the bird. He gave me the fin right there in front of us. But as, as a Kmart employee back in the day, one of the things you had to do was you had to straighten up the aisles. You know, organize stuff, put it back on the shelf. And you always hated having to do the toy department. Because the kids would just, 
they would wreck everything. You know, the parents, they wouldn't do nothing with the kids. They just let them run wild through the toy department, so stuff would be everywhere. But you go to a toy department now, like Walmart toy department, there ain't no kids in the aisles. And the kids don't even care about them toys anymore. Action figures are $20 a piece. The only people that's buying them is adults that's looking for their childhood again, you know. So it, it's just another one of the things that's changed. Toys R Us. When I was a kid, man, I love going to Toys R Us. We had Toys R Us and we had Children's Palace that were like standalone stores in Knoxville, just huge toy stores. And then you had in the mall, you had a, a, a toy store called KB Toys. I used to love going there, all out of business. I did hear something recently that they were going to bring back a Toys R Us. I think they were going to put them in a few airports and a shopping mall or something like that for Christmas. But like the days of having a standalone Toys R Us store that you can go to anytime and look at all the toys and stuff, gone, over. It's amazing. So who knows what's going to happen in the future. We're going to change this gulp out. That's going to happen in the present. We've been rocking it. I think this is the same gulp we've had on the whole trip. We've caught a bunch of fish on this thing. But the juice has all got to be gone by now. So we're going to, we're going to switch this thing out. Let's get us another gulp out of here and put it on. Yeah, I just, you know, it just makes you wonder, like, what's going to be gone? What What's common and prevalent in our lives right now that's going to be completely gone in 20 years? You know, these, these cameras right here, for instance. You know, I've been talking about this camera a lot today. With technology going the way it is, is it possible that these action cameras get eliminated in the next decade? You know, will, will there be a time in the near future where instead of having a camera here on my chest, that maybe I have a pair of sunglasses I put on and you all see through my eyes? Like maybe you have like a virtual reality something maybe you have a pair of glasses right like you have your own pair of glasses and if i go live on a youtube video you have your glasses and you see everything that i see live as it's happening like that could be if if that technology ever came along action camera market would be dead gopro dji done you know what I mean? Unless it, well, I mean, it could be those companies potentially that come out with those products. But the action cameras themselves would be out of business. It would be just a old technology product, never to be used again. I mean, I remember, I'm, you know, I'm aging myself here, obviously, but when I was growing up, we didn't have cell phones. You know, there was no, I didn't get a cell phone until I was, hell, I don't know, 16, 18 years old, I guess. And even then, it was just basically, you'd have a a cell phone in your car, just kind of an emergency purpose type thing. It wasn't something that was just a staple of our life like it is today. I don't even know, with today's time, I don't even know how I can function without a cell phone. Here's some fish. The other, the other week there, I had to go up to the mall. But you want to do some good people watching in today's society, go to, go to a shopping mall. But I had to go up there to the Apple store and I had to get me a new battery in my phone because mine wouldn't hold a charge anymore. It was super annoying. And so I had to go up there and, and get a new battery put in. And I thought, you know, I had an appointment to get this battery put in. 
And I thought, you know, it's a battery. You pop the phone open, plug a battery in, and I'm good to go, right? Well, no, <laughs> that ain't the case. Not with an iPhone, by gosh. It's apparently a long process to replace the battery because I had to give them my phone for an hour and a half while they worked on this. And so they've got my phone. I've got to kill an hour and a half. So I'm walking around the mall. And there ain't no stores in the mall outside of the Apple store. There's literally nothing in the mall that's for me. You know, I can go to the hat store, you know, look around for about two minutes. I can go to the alumni hall. That's the, the UT merchandise store. I can look in there for five minutes. But there's literally nothing else for me to do. I don't even think they have, an, I didn't see an arcade. Used to, you went to the mall as a kid, they had an arcade. I don't think they do that anymore. So nothing for me to do. And of course I had Daphne the dog with me. She was out in the car because you know, I thought this was going to be a 10, 15 minute process for me to be in and out of there. I had no idea I was going to be at the mall this long or else I wouldn't have took Daphne. So I ended up going back out to the car and just hanging out with her until it was time to go back in and get my phone. I was bored out of my mind, y'all. I kept like, I kept like reaching for my phone because that's what I do when I'm bored. I pull out my phone. And it just got me thinking, it's like, could I even function without a phone? You know, it's, it's nice sometimes to get away from the phone and just kind of, you know, if you're out fishing or something, you know, put the phone down, get away from the screens and social media and stuff. But like, if I wasn't, if I'm in a situation where I'm potentially bored, could I do without a phone? I, I don't know. That's just where we're at in society, you know? I don't know. But how, I mean, I, I, we made it as kids, all, in my case, all the way up through teenage years without a phone. And now I can't live without the damn things. But when I was a teenager, that, I remember that first phone I had, it was like a brick. It was about the size of a brick. There wasn't no looking around on no MySpace or Facebook. It was just, you could call people with it. That was it. And then you eventually got to where you could text. I had one of them. I remember, I don't remember what year this was. I can't remember. I think it was my first nursing job. I had it, so this would have been 2004 probably. 2004, 2005. But I had one of the Motorola Razor phones, and it was super thin. It was like, about, you know, thinner than a wallet. And it would flip open. And you know, all you could do, you could call and you could text on it, that was it. But I remember like, man, how awesome is that? We got a phone this thin, just fits right in your pocket. Who would have ever imagined what was coming just a few years later with the iPhone and with where we're at today, being able to film videos on our phone and post them to the interweb. Take amazing, take, we take better quality pictures now with our phones than what you could with cameras that costed a few hundred dollars back 20 years ago. And hell, Motorola, I think Motorola is another company that's out of business now, I think. I don't know that Motorola makes any phones anymore. I think they may have went under. Camera companies, you know, when I was a kid, I remember in front of the grocery store, there was a photo booth. I think it was a Polaroid or Kodak. Two companies, both of which I think are both out of business now. Uh, but it was like Polaroid or Kodak. And it was a, it was a little booth like out in the grocery store parking lot. And you would take your film. Back then, people took pictures on cameras and it had film, rolls of film, and you would drop those rolls of film off at that, at that little business booth there. And you'd go back so many days a week later and pick up your photos. 
You know, you'd have photos printed out. Now, those things, they're, they're long gone now, of course. And hell, I think both Kodak and Polaroid, both are, are probably out of business. Unless they've transitioned into some other kind of industry. Yeah, that's amazing. It's amazing the things that have changed and things that used to be a big deal but aren't anymore. Come here, fish. This fish right here, you know, he's young. He's probably, I don't know, a couple years old maybe. I don't really know how old he is, but I'm just saying. He's so young. This fish right here, he's gone is what he is. He didn't want to be up here on this video no more. But that fish will never see a super soaker water gun because they're gone. Super soaker water guns don't exist anymore. That fish will never, he won't ever know what he's missing. Y'all remember them super soaker water guns? They were these huge water guns. They could, they could, you could blast somebody from a long ways away. They hold a lot of water. I don't think anybody plays with water guns anymore. I think it went from water guns to paintball I don't know if anybody plays paintball anymore either. If they do, I don't know where they do it at. They nowhere around nowhere around here to do it, to my knowledge. It got big for I had some paintball stuff for like a one or two year period. My late teens. I think it was a fad that kind of went out. You know, something that's, that's really gotten big in recent years, it's gotten a lot bigger than what I ever thought it would, is disc golf. Now, I used to play some disc golf. I was never any good at it. But when I was, when I was on the road all the time doing travel nursing and stuff, I'd take my golf discs, because that's one thing that any town I would go to at their local parks, most of them, would have a disc golf course set up. And those parks, you know, they're free to play at. So it was something I could go to a new town, not know anybody and have something fun and free to do. So, you know, I'd take my golf disc with me. And my old dog, Roscoe, he was a friendly dog and, and he would always stay close to me and stuff. So I could, I could go to the local disc golf courses in my area and take him with me and he could go run around and pee on trees and stuff while I would play disc golf. Now I can't do that anymore with, because Daphne was, she's a terror. She, she can't be let off a leash. She'd never come back. So I can't do that with her. But disc golf though has really got huge. I mean, they've got professional disc golf tours now where people make a lot of money to go play disc golf professionally. It's one of them things, I, you know, I, it was fun. You know, I enjoyed it a lot. And there was, you know, a certain group of people who, who were really into it, but I never imagined that it would take off to the point that it has. It's been pretty, pretty amazing to see that. I ain't played though and well, I probably ain't played since Roscoe died. Truth be told, I don't, I don't think I have. Cast over that branch is what I've done. Y'all didn't see that though. Hopefully the camera quality is not so good that y'all saw me cast over that branch. <laughs> I hope, I hope y'all didn't see that. Where we're at, we're coming up on what, an hour and a half on this? We still got battery. That's pretty good. I am filming in 1080 today. I'm not filming in 4K because the file sizes, when you upload, and again, most of y'all don't give a crap about this, but if you're trying to upload a video that's three to four hours long on YouTube, 
the file sizes if you filmed in 4k is ridiculously large and it takes hours upon hours to get uploaded so i do these videos here in 1080 just to save on time getting them uploaded so that may in interfere with the quality a little bit today and i'm still curious to see what y'all think about this camera We'll see how it goes. Like I said, y'all be honest down there in the comment box. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings either way. If y'all like it, we'll roll with it. If you don't, well, we won't. It's that simple. Well, I got another, I got another leaf or something on here. This thing wouldn't shake off for nothing. Thankfully, though, we got past all that junk on the water. It seems to be moving on down river. There is still some along the shoreline over there that we're casting around, but the bulk of it's gone. We can actually get a cast down these fish. I don't know how many I've caught now, but it's been several. and I've been really impressed with the quality of the bluegill that we've gotten down through here. I mean, it's been very good quality bluegill. And that musky didn't look too shabby either. <laughs> the, the brief time I saw him, I wouldn't be surprised if we got some bass through here too at some point. I have caught largemouth and smallmouth through here before. I've caught, I ain't caught any crappie lately. Well, I'll take that back. I have caught crappie wolf skipjack fish, but I ain't caught them on the ultralight lately. But I have caught them in this area here before too, so. Yeah, I've been catching some crappie just skipjack fishing. I troll jigs and I'm going after skips and I've been getting some crappie. Fortunately, I've been catching the skips right where I've been catfishing. It's made it super convenient. I'm not, even if we got on, I didn't bring my skipjack rods with me today because I knew I wasn't going to need no bait. I'm not catfishing this afternoon or nothing because I got the dirt coming and then tomorrow's ball game day, the bass boats and Vol Navy can have it and I'm probably going to go after carp Sunday just because I don't want to deal with the Vol Navy people coming back down. And I still, I'm, after last night not catching any dang carp on that live stream, I'm just, I'm wanting to catch one even more now. I've been in the mood to do some carp fishing lately, and I hadn't been before last night. I think it had probably been early July since I had went for carp i just ain't i've been busy <laughs> there's so many hours in the day and i've had those those out of town catfish tournaments that i fished this year and so that took up a lot of time you know planning for those and traveling to those and stuff so cut into my cut into my carp fishing a little bit we're gonna get back after them here soon i'm gonna I'm going to catch me one. And when I do, I'm going to tell them about how they done me in that live stream, embarrassing me like that. Go live for, I don't know how long I was live for, two, two and a half hours, I reckon. Couldn't, couldn't catch one. The worst part of it about it was all, it was right before I was getting ready to leave. And I was telling people bye on the live stream and a rod goes down, acting like a carp. I mean, just a, big run rod got buried and i picked up on it and he's gone that was just insult to injury i'm gonna get back after him though i've been fishing out of this kayak for my catfish trips mostly lately just you know again this time of year my youtube views drop 
so I can kind of focus more on just having fun. And so I can come out in this kayak, no motor, no graph, a couple rods. If I don't catch as many fish or, you know, if I don't do any good, not a big deal. So I've just been, you know, doing that and kind of having fun. But the carp trips, those are definitely better in my other kayak because I have the, the power poles mounted to that kayak. So it allows me to anchor in shallow water. We're still, our water level will be up through, I think they normally start dropping our water level in mid-November, I think. So when that happens, I'll have some bank access again. Now I can just use whatever kayak access the bank. But right now, like if I go carp fishing, there's really nowhere for me to get out and fish on the shore. So I'm gonna have to just fish out of the kayak and those power poles are a big help with that. I had my other kayak, you know, it's got that motor. And I've had some issues lately. I had a I had another remote go bad. I went out one morning, my motor was on. Like it was just it had turned on by itself. And then I got to the lake one day. I was making a bait run and I couldn't because my remote wouldn't work. And I put the motor in the water and it just randomly went into spot lock mode on its own. And it was acting all crazy and my battery or my remote had been corroded in there. So I guess it was just acting all crazy because of that. And so I keep an extra remote for that very reason, you know? So anyway, I was using the backup remote and I get to the water last night to do that live stream and the backup remote won't work. So Thankfully, I had ordered another backup remote for the backup remote when the other one crapped out there a couple weeks back. And so I had it. So now I'm down another remote. So I don't know what's going on with that. It sure is frustrating, though, when, when you're using technology and it don't work. Boy, it's frustrating. It's amazing how we survive so long without the technology. But now that we're adapted to it, it's like me not having my phone for an hour and a half at the mall the other night while my battery got replaced. Brutal to go without technology now. But I do enjoy fishing out of this kayak, the simplicity of it. Not having to, I don't have to worry about a motor remote problem in this kayak. I don't have to worry about charging a batteries for a motor or a fish finder when I get home. And this style of fishing, you know, I don't, I don't need it. I mean, we could come down through here with a live scope, certainly, and and we could, we could save some time as far as not casting at places where fish aren't there. But I don't feel. I don't feel gypped by not having it. You know, I'm going to go home today having caught a bunch of fish and having had a bunch of fun. I don't have less fun by not having technology on this kayak. You know, and some of the catfishing I've been doing lately, because I've been, I'm catching a leaf right now, but some of the catfishing I've been doing lately has just been anchor fishing. And so I don't need... You know, I don't, I don't necessarily really need a motor. I'm not trolling. You know, I'm not, I'm not drifting, so I don't need a graph. So I can just go and use my phone to kind of get myself where I need to be through a phone app there. It's got the lake maps and just anchor myself down and I can have a dang good time without really using all those gadgets and stuff. This fish right here, he ain't got no gadget. This fish right here, he ain't even got a can opener. That's how, that's how far behind they are. 
in technology. He ain't even got him an electric can opener. He probably just has to take him a knife and cut the top of a can off if he wants to get him a can of beans. He may not even have cans. They may have everything in jars down there. They may still have to to do their own type of canning. Speaking of vegetables, I mentioned this in the live stream, but one of the things I'm gonna do with that dirt I'm getting today, after I'm done filling the holes in my yard, I'm gonna use whatever's left and make me a raised bed garden. I've, I've got a tiller at my house it's a big tiller too, Cub Cadet RT65. It's a rear tine tiller, real nice tiller. Now, I used to enjoy putting out a garden, but since them neighbors moved in beside me over there, on that side of the house where I had the garden, I don't like working in it anymore. It ruined it for me. But I would still like to have some fresh vegetables in the spring and summer. And I don't need very much, you know. Hell, all the stuff I would grow when I put out a bigger garden, hell, I gave most of it away or composted it, you know. I didn't, it just ain't possible for just me to eat all that stuff. So I don't really need a lot of plants. So I'm just going to do a raised bed garden. I'll probably sell my tiller in the spring. But I'm going to use the rest of that dirt to make me a bed. I'll be planting just a few things there in the spring, you know, maybe two or three tomato plants and a few cucumbers and some peppers, you know, just stuff that I eat. I'm not going to do, uh, I'm not going to do any corn. I'm not going to do every year. I'd waste a bunch of garden space on, on melons, you know, like watermelons and stuff. And you know, the watermelons take up a bunch of space and, and really I like watermelon. It's a great summertime treat, but I really, I only need about one a year, one or two a year, you know? So instead of spending all that time and garden space growing watermelons, I'd rather just go to the farmer's market and spend about $4 and buy a watermelon once a year. There's another good bluegill right here. I'm blowing in on these fish. I'm gonna have to spin back around here, y'all. We're gonna have to, we're blowing up on top of these fish. Come here, bluegill. Let me get you unhooked. You ever had watermelon before? He says never. He don't know what he's missing. But yeah, so, you know, something like that where watermelon takes up a big portion of my garden. Pumpkins, I've never been able to grow pumpkins right. Now, I had several years there where I tried growing me one of them big 100 pound uh, pumpkins. And I never grew them any bigger than basketball size. But I'd waste a bunch of garden space trying. I ain't doing that. You know, so I'm just going to have a few plants, just plant just enough for me to, basically what I'm going to eat. And so I won't need a big space. And because it's a raised bed, I won't have to spend a bunch of time out there tending to it and stuff since I can't enjoy that anymore because of my neighbors that are, just terrible. So that's gonna be my plan with that extra dirt. But I got a lot of holes to fill in. So that's gonna be a chore to do that. Some of them holes have gotten pretty deep too. I guess we're like old stumps had just kind of deteriorated, rotted out. There's one hole I'm gonna fill in. It's that shit's probably a couple feet deep. Probably about as big around as a basketball. A couple feet deep it's formed. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put some manual labor work in. I've been doing a lot of that lately. Around the house getting some stuff, getting some stuff done ahead of winter. I'll tell you what we about have to do right now. The camera says, 4% battery. So we've made it 104 minutes, looks like here. That's pretty good on, on one single battery. But I'll tell you what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to change this thing out. Here's what I got. This is what comes with these 
cameras here, y'all, in case you wonder. So this DJI thing, it's got a battery case. You charge all the batteries at once. Just plug a USB into that. And it's got this thing right there. And it tells you they're green to let you know that they're charged. So that's, that's pretty cool that you can charge all the batteries at once. But anyway, this video technically, I guess, won't be uncut completely because I'm going to have to turn it off a second to put a new battery in. So bear with me a second here. All right, we're back. Lord, we had water on the lens too. None of you has told me about that. I don't even know if y'all could see everything cause the water drops on there. You gotta holler at me. One of you has come through the screen and tapped me on the shoulder or something, let me know in the future when that happens. This won't be a thing going forward. I'll have a battery pack plugged in in the future to keep us from having to change batteries. I was just curious with this being my first time using this camera, how long would a regular battery last? 104 minutes is pretty good. Now it's a, it's a cool day out here today. So I wouldn't have suspected it to overheat even if this camera would overheat. But again, it's, it's, uh, it's supposedly, it supposedly won't overheat. So, yeah, so far so good. We'll see what the video footage looks like. I'm real curious to see with that file size, like how many will it all be when I get home today? Will that whole 104 minutes there, will that be on one video file for me to move to the computer or will it be multiple files? I'm real curious. Y'all don't give a crap about that stuff, but you know, again, it's a good time of the year for me to be trying out new things and getting stuff dialed in to be ready to hopefully try to make as good a, a good a quality video as I can put out. I know I set the bar pretty low most days, but I try to do the best quality work I can on the spring and summer months when when views are higher but if you stick with me this time of year in the fall and the winter months and, and some of you do some of you watch every video i put out i want you to know i appreciate you uh, i'm very grateful to have you there's a lot of part-time casual people out there you know that just basically interested in fishing videos during the time of year where most people go fishing, but there's some of you out there that's hardcore fishermen like me. And I appreciate you watching. This bluegill just flung water on my nose. I got a water drop on my nose cause you bluegill. He don't care. He don't care one bit. That fish ain't got no respect. He tried to do that to me. Bird's pretty active up in the trees today. I don't know if y'all can hear them on this fancy microphone. I think it kind of takes out a lot of the external noise and lets you focus on my beautiful voice. My beautiful voice that won't be singing in no concerts. Come over here, fish. Fish ain't never been to a concert. He probably goes to an orchestra. Get out of here, fish. You're too small to be on this video. I shouldn't have give you I shouldn't have give you any camera time, fish. Normal video, he wouldn't have made the cut. Lucky for him. We're raw and, and mostly uncut. I was hoping he might have some. Bigger friends over there, a little deeper under him. I wonder, you know, we saw that muskie there earlier. I wonder how many 
Lake Muskie, are they, obviously they don't get caught very frequently, right? And that's a given. But is that just because they're, they're lure shy? Or is it just because they're kind of solitary creatures? You know, like I wonder, like this stretch of this cliff here that we, we've been fishing along, how many muskie have we passed down through here? Like undoubtedly, you know, we've caught several bluegill. We've probably passed by hundreds more that just, we either didn't get to bait in front of them or they didn't want it, whatever, you know. But undoubtedly, there's been hundreds of bluegill that we've passed by. I wonder how many muskie we've passed by. Be interesting to know the the numbers on that. You know, sometimes they do them, the game wardens will come through and do them, I don't know what they're called, surveys, I guess, but they, they do the electroshock where they zap the water and the fish are kind of stunned and they float up and they count them and tag some of them and this, that, and the other. And I think, I could be telling lies here, but I think the electroshock thing only works for a few feet down in the water column so fish that are deeper down they wouldn't be affected by it so i don't know that they would have accurate accurate numbers on their studies for some fish but it would be interesting to know like if you take a if you took a quarter mile section of a shoreline like how many muskie are there on average they're clearly a fish that that are a little bit lure shy right i mean they have to be because all them musky fishermen they do that that figure eight motion when they get back they get their lure brought in back to the boat they do a figure eight with it with the rod tip down the water trying to get that lure to change directions and trigger a, a strike from a muskie that's followed it all the way back to the boat. Now, so clearly if, if a muskie has followed a bait all the way back, it was clearly a little bit lure shy, right? Or it would have got it right away. It was just following along cause it's curious. And then when that bait changes directions, it's like, oh, I got to get it now. It's getting away. Boom, bites it. But I don't know. Muskie are an interesting fish, but I just don't have the patience. I don't have the patience or desire to really pursue them. I think, you know, it's like anything else. If you, if you dedicated yourself to it and really put the time into it, you could probably get good at catching them. You know, it's one of them things with, with anything in life, if you apply yourself and you practice and put the time in, you're, it's hard to stay bad at something that you, that you try to get better at. But I'm just not the personality type that's ever going to be good at that style of fishing. I just don't have the, I don't have the patience for it. If you do have the patience for it, my hat's off to you. <laughs> if I make three more casts here without getting a bite with this ultralight rod, I'm going to be tapping my foot here impatient wanting these fish to bite, you know. I just think I ain't got in me. Now, when I'm catfishing, I can set on a spot long periods of time without getting bit. But I'm doing stuff, you know. I'm on my phone. I'm you know, I'm, I'm entertaining myself while I wait. It's not like I'm just making a million casts and not getting a bite. Oh, boy, this fish, he's gone. He's under our seat here, y'all. Hold on. I hear him flopping. Where you at, Bluegill? There he is. Get up here. You've made a fool of yourself in front of your whole family, fish. His second cousin's gonna be laughing at him when they see this video. See how he flopped around and completely missed the water. That's like them people that 
on the blooper videos, they, they're trying to dive into a pool and they miss. That's what that bluegill done. He tried to dive into the, into the lake and missed and hit the kayak. That is something I do watch with, with modern day wrestling. You know, wrestling, when I was a kid in the 80s and stuff, and especially in the late 90s during the, what they call the Attitude Era, back when you had Stone Cold and The Rock and Degeneration X and WCW had NWO, that's when wrestling was good. It's unwatchable nowadays. But one thing I do still watch from time to time when the videos pop up is these, these indie wrestlers on the, you know, they're on the indie scene. They're trying to make it in modern day wrestling and they do these ridiculous moves and they go terribly wrong. <laughs> it's, it's wrestling going wrong. I will always watch those videos to see them crash and burn on, on camera. I don't know why wrestling got so terrible to watch, but boy, it has. And the best thing about wrestling in recent years with CM Punk coming back on AEW show. And I'll be doggone if they didn't fire him because he got in a, I guess he got in a real fight backstage, if I understand correctly. And so they fired him over it. And I'm like, that's the best thing. He was the best thing on wrestling in years. And they done, they done fired him. I'm going to fire that bluegill too. He's fired. He, he ain't coming back on this video. They got that other wrestler and, oh Lord. Okay. We got out of it. I wrapped that thing around the leaf about three times. We got lucky there. We still ain't lost a jig, knock on wood. But that other wrestler on the AEW show, MJF, Maxwell, Maxwell something Friedman. He wears that Burberry scarf, which is apparently a very luxurious brand. It's apparently a very expensive scarf. But anyway, he's a bad guy on there. He's a heel. And they, uh, he comes out and insults the audience and stuff. He, I've watched some of his promos and stuff. He's great. And he seems to be a pretty good wrestler too. But the problem is, who's he going to wrestle? He's got nobody to go against there that's that's worth a crap. So, for you to have a Stone Cold Steve Austin, you got to have a Vince McMahon for him to go against. You know, to for The Rock to be successful, you got to have a you know a Stone Cold there for him to wrestle against, a, a, a Bret Hart for the Shawn Michaels. You know, you, you got to have that. MJF ain't got nobody. So it's just unwatchable these days. I did watch that TV program about wrestling called Heels. It was on the, the Stars channel. And it was a really good program. I enjoyed the heck out of it. In the final episode of season two, they had all these cliffhangers. Like it was a really good episode and you had all these storylines going on and all these cliffhangers and you couldn't wait to see what was going to happen next. And I'd be doggone if they don't cancel the show. So we'll never, we'll never get the ending of the story. So after that, I decided, you know what? The Stars Network, I'm never watching any show they ever put out ever again. They they broke my trust. You can't do... You can't make a show like that and then just cut it off with cliffhangers. They done us dirty. And I don't get to stars either because I don't have cable. I don't, uh, I just, I probably should, I've got some Netflix passwords and some Hulu passwords. I don't even pay for these things. I probably shouldn't say that out loud, but you know what I'm saying. And so I don't, I don't have the Stars Network, so I had to pay to buy this show, and I paid for it because I liked it. And then for them to do me like that and just cancel the show with all these cliffhangers, that's wrong. 
So I'll never watch another program on stars ever again. Oh, I'll never see that fish again either because he just come off. Here's what I don't understand about TV shows. Here's another thing. I'll go off on another tangent here. Let's just use this show called Hills on stars here for an example. From what I read, the reason why they had canceled the show was that ratings had dropped. Uh, they had lost a bunch of viewers. But they clearly still had an audience for it. It just wasn't as big as what they wanted or whatever. So they canceled the show. Well, I think part of the drop from season one to season two was you had a long gap between when season two come out after season one had ended. It was well over a year. I think a lot of people who probably watched season one and liked it probably forgot about it. Or, you know, they're like me and they don't have stars. So, you know, you forget about it and you don't, you don't see the previews and whatnot that it's coming back on because you don't have that particular channel. Of course, ratings are going to drop. Here's what I think TV programs and TV networks ought to do. This would fix a lot of the problems. When you green light a show to film, don't just go season by season. Don't do that. When you green light a show, if it's good enough to put on the air for one season, do a minimum of three seasons. And have all of your writing and your stories done for all three seasons before you start filming. And then, when you start filming, film all three seasons at once. So then, when, when a show is moving along, you're getting feedback from the audience when season one is airing. You can go ahead and, why, why do you have to wait a year for season two? You could already release it while the show's still hot. And so you would, you would keep a lot of those people that you, would, would you, that you might lose otherwise. Another thing that happens with a lot of these shows oftentimes is they'll, they'll film a season and then the actors on the shows before the next season starts, well, they'll go find other work. And so then they have to write them off the show. Well, like if you just filmed a bunch of seasons at once, you wouldn't have to worry about that. You'd already have them, you'd already have them there. You could just film them continuously and they wouldn't have to go find other work and you wouldn't have scheduling conflicts and all that crap. So you could do a full run of a show, have it filmed, and I think most shows, three to five seasons is plenty. So I think that's what they ought to do. Just when they're budgeting for these shows, budget for three to five seasons right from the start. It ain't like these TV networks are going broke, right? I mean, they're making a buttload of money. They can afford it. They're just cheap and they don't want to do it. They would rather, they would rather instead of just focusing their attention and their budget, on a few shows and making many seasons of them, they would rather put out 50 shows and be like, okay, well, these top five or 10, we'll, we'll do a season two of them. It's just, it seems silly to me. When I take over the world and run things, we're gonna be doing things differently. You, you would think it would just, we live in a different world now. You know, it's just a different world. Everything's streaming, everything on demand. Why do we have to wait a year for a new show or a new season of come out of a show? Meanwhile, in the year break that you've taken between seasons, other networks, they're putting out new shows. There's always the next hot thing, right? So like if you could just, if you could get a show like a, trying to think of a show that was hot off the top of my head. Walking Dead. Walking Dead, for instance. Walking Dead, when it was getting going there, there was a, there was a two or three year window where The Walking Dead was like must-see TV. Now, they eventually ruined it with poor storylines and stuff. But when it was running hot and ratings were through the roof for it, why have a year off to wait on the next 
season. Just keep that thing going. Wouldn't it be better to make, you'd make the same money or more, you'd just make it in a shorter period of time. Instead of dragging a show out for five years in five seasons, have the show, have five seasons worth of shows in two years and make that money up front and then apply that money to your next show. I, you know, again, it's, it, it seems logical to me in my mind, but what the hell do I know? It's better for the consumer because then we don't have to wait. You know, it ain't nothing worse than being on a, a cliffhanger episode. You know, like, well, crap, that was great. Now I got to wait a year to see what happens. It ain't good for consumers. You would think they'd focus on your customer, you know, what's best for us. Yeah, when I take over the TV network someday, things are going to be different, y'all. It's going to be way different. Yeah. I ain't watching no shows right now, though, other than football. Thankfully, during football season, you know, we got games Monday night, Thursday night, and Sunday. And then, of course, college on Saturday. I don't watch much college because it's pretty much unwatchable. I watch Tennessee because I'm a big Tennessee fan. I keep up with the SEC, but college is just, compared to the NFL, I was talking about that during the live stream, how it's just, the TV product just ain't, ain't very good. The fake injuries, the poor referee skills, I mean, they're just, there's so many disruptions to the game just hard to watch the team can't get momentum at all the nfl it's just the commentators are better referees are better the players are better the tv's better everything's better it's a better show to watch so but i do watch way too much football i don't have any other shows right now i think I think Cobra Kai should be coming out at some point soon. I guess the whole Hollywood strike or whatever, I didn't really follow along with how all that was going. But I guess that probably messed up a lot of the, the times when shows would be releasing and coming out and stuff. I don't really know. I don't really know the deal with all that. It ain't ain't one of them things I really, I try not to focus too much on current events outside of sports. This ain't much, I ain't got much interest in. I, this squirrel's interesting though, looking up here at him. He's up there on that cliff. He's watching me, watching him, watching me. Watch me catch a fish here in a minute, squirrel. He's going up there to get a better look at it from a higher angle. I lost sight of him. Oh, well, there he is. He's going through the woods there now. He's up that tree. Them dang squirrels can jump, buddy. Look at him jump tree to tree right there. Dang, dang tree rats, what they are. One of them ends up in this kayak. I'm probably going to let him have it, though. A rabid squirrel would be a force to be reckoned with. With their ability to jump and climb, you know they got to have some claws on them there to be able to work up them trees. I imagine, I imagine they'd be a, a, a real force to deal with. Thankfully, they got that big tail you could grab hold of. But that'd probably be your only chance of getting away from a rabid squirrel would be grabbing by the tail. He'd be all over you, buddy. Be like Clark Griswold and the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, Clark Griswold. I ain't watched that movie in years. Classic, though. Clark Griswold.
something just fell off it. I think that bird up there about lost his footing when that branch <laughs> broke and it fell down in the water. I was catfishing the other day and saw a, a bald eagle and he come down on a branch and broke it. I mean, I'm talking a branch. And he flew off with that thing, I guess, to go build his nest with. But I mean, it was a, it was a branch. I mean, it wasn't like a stick. I mean, it was a, like a big branch. Come here, bluegill. Well, we caught the heck out of him this morning, ain't we? He's just, this bluegill's just happy I'm here. Nope. Oh. Well, he was. Now he says he's out of here. He, he said this, this video wasn't all it was hyped up to be. He's got better things to do. He said it's overrated. A lot of buildup. Poor results. We'll see if his friend here, we'll see if he likes it any better. Come here, bluegill. You got anything to say? About as big as his friend. Get out of here. I ain't gonna give you the chance to badmouth me, old fish. Let's throw over there and see if we can get another one. That's how it goes, this ultralight fishing. You know, you, you, you go along and, and cast and cast and cast and you eventually come across places that just have concentrations of fish. They're just schooled up. Sometimes it might be something that you see like that, that one log back there we were getting all them fish on and other times it could be stuff underwater that you, that's there and you just don't know about it. You just don't see it without something like a, a live scope or forward facing sonar, you know. But this style of fishing, I just don't feel like I miss out by not having the graph on this kayak. I'm still having a dang good time. I'm catching a bunch of fish. I just enjoy it. I enjoy the, I've said it so many times, I enjoy the simplicity of it. I don't feel compelled to go out and try a bunch of different, oh, that was a little better when I was gonna show off. But these gulp, I mean, they work so well. I don't feel compelled to go try a bunch of different baits. My ultralight rod here, I've had this rod for, gosh, I don't know. I'm trying to think when I filmed my first ultralight video on this channel, I just missed a fish. It was probably, I think the first ultralight video on this channel was probably 2016 or 2017. And I had this rod then, so <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been a good quality rod. I've had to replace a reel since then, but you know, you find what works. I just don't feel the need to change it. You know, if I can go out and catch fish, have a good time doing what I'm doing here, why, why be constantly changing something just to change it? I'm stocked up too on jig heads. I've got enough jig heads and gulp for the zombie apocalypse. And I've got a, I've got a full 10,000 yard spool of two pound line and I've got a partial spool of another that I'm still working on. So I'll probably never run out of line ever again either. So one of the nice things about this style of fishing is I don't really have to buy anything for it anymore. A basic kayak, rod and reel combo. I've got jigs, gulp, and line all in bulk. So I probably won't have, unless I just mess up a reel or accidentally break a rod, I won't have to buy anything for ultralight fishing for several years. I just got this reel last year, so it should be good for a while. And I hope the rod don't break. I've actually got another one anyway, just like this. So I wouldn't, it wouldn't cost me nothing out of pocket to replace it. But yeah, 
It's nice. I can, them old bass fishing guys, you know, they all the time buy new lures. And the next best thing that's come out, you know, the next variation of the same bait they're throwing in 47 different colors, they got to have them all. That's just constant consumerism to be a bass fisherman. You just always got to be buying stuff. It's just another reason why I don't like bass fishing. It, it don't. It don't help the fact that I can't ever catch them when I want to. <laughs> that if I ain't trying to catch bass, I'm gonna catch them. If I go out in a tournament and I'm trying to, I'm gonna struggle. Seems to be how it goes. I thought we was gonna tear up some bluegill right there and keep catching. I guess we done caught every one of them. No, oh, no, oh, right there's one. I saw my, oh, I lost him too. I saw my line starting to swim. I do gotta get some stuff at some point. Probably, I'll probably wait till Black Friday, I guess. I'm gonna have to get me some skipjack supplies off of a trout magnet there. I gotta get me some, I went to tie me some rigs and realized I'm a little low on those jig heads and I need some more crappie magnets. So I'll have to place an order. I'll probably wait till Black Friday, see if they don't offer some free shipping or discounts or something. So I don't need them. I don't need them immediately, but I am going to need them for the next year. Always got to be catching bait, don't we, Bluegill? Always. I wish I could catch some catfish consistently, big fish anyway, consistently on Bluegill. It would make life so much easier because I could just go ultralight fishing and be stocked up on bait all the time. But for whatever reason here, I know it's different in every body of water. Some people swear by bluegill. They say it's the best bait ever. Probably is on some places. But out here where I fish, bluegill just ain't a, it just ain't a premier bait. I just don't, I catch fish on it. But it's kind of like, it's kind of like me using chicken for bait. I catch a lot of fish using it, but can't catch anything big with it. Bigger fish I catch on skipjack and shad and white bass and crappie. Not the bluegill. Something splashing behind me there. I heard them. We done passed them fish up. They missed their chance, by gosh. It sure is fun though. Get a nice calm morning. Other than that one bass boat that he got behind us there and went the other way, going the other direction of the shoreline. Other than that, we ain't seen nobody out here. Just uh, me and you are watching this video and a few squirrels and a lot of these fish right here. And this one's pulling, buddy. Well, he come flying up in the air right there. Did y'all see that? He's trying to be a bass or something. Who do you think you are, fish? He says he'll be whoever he wants to be. He's going to dress up as a bass on Halloween. <laughs> I'm hoping it stays a reasonable temperature a little bit longer into the year. Tennessee is a weird, has a weird climate this time of year. They some years in October where it's cold. I remember when I was a kid, we had one Halloween, we got, we got a few inches of snow. But then they some years where hell it'll be 80 degrees in October. You know, it just, it varies every year. 
And so I'm hoping we got, I'm hoping we got a, some more time of cold or warm weather, I mean. Cause I sure don't like the cold. I'm already missing my flip flops. I had a fish right there I just missed too. Caught that piece of grass though. <laughs> Caught a lot of that today. I can't get hold of it. There we go. Fishy. You know, something else that I've never been able to figure out is, you know, when I was a kid, I talked about there, the GI Joes and stuff. That fish didn't want me to unhook him. He unhooked himself. But GI Joes was such an amazing toy as a kid. I mean, I, I played with them things every day, building forts out in the woods and the creeks and stuff and loved them things. And then at some point in time, and I don't remember when I stopped playing with toys, but at some point in time, I stopped and we all stop. Why is that? Why does it like a switch shut off where you just don't enjoy the things that you enjoy anymore? It's not like that as an adult. You know, I like going fishing. Well, I like going fishing today the same way I like going fishing yesterday and the way I'm going to like going fishing tomorrow. You know, that's consistent through adulthood. But with something like playing with G.I. Joes as a kid, you reach an age where you just, you just stop. I don't know why that is. Of course, with the G.I. Joe's at Walmart now, with them being about $20 per figure, it's probably best for my wallet that I don't like playing with toys anymore. I couldn't afford to be, a, be buying them things all the time. I have to feel like, I mean, it can't cost, I bet you the cost of production for a plastic action figure today is probably significantly less than it was in the 80s just because the production is so much better now, you know? Everything's more efficient. So the profit on a action figure that costs a few cents to make and they're charging $20 for, I mean, the, the markup is just incredible. They're making a fortune. You'd think they'd be getting these current generation of kids that, that figure out how to get them playing with action figures. I still, you know, I don't, I don't know any small children. I don't have any in my, I don't have any, at least none that I'm, I'm aware of. <laughs> and, uh, I don't, I don't try, I try not to be friends with anybody that has kids either. Cause you know, their whole lives are consumed by their children. So it's, hard to be friends with people like that when you don't actually have kids to be forced to go to ball games and you know team activities and stuff with so it's hard to be friends with those type of people but I don't know aside from video games and I get maybe they play video games all the time I don't know but like is there anything else kids do nowadays besides video games like is there anything else that they're into do they still play on a, I, I guess they still play on a playground because I live pretty close to a school and I can hear them when they're at recess. But like, I don't know what kids do. You know, when I was growing up, me and my neighbor, he's the only person my age in the neighborhood, but we played outside all the time. You know, we'd play football and 
a wiffle ball and stuff, and we'd shoot bottle rockets at each other on 4th of July. You know, we were all the time doing stuff outside. I never see kids outside. I don't know what they do. Like, I can't remember the last time I'm driving down the road and see small children out in their yard playing playing backyard football, you know? I can't remember the last time I saw that. Oh boy, I shot that jig right back at my face. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see my life flash before my eyes just then? Boy, that thing was, that thing was coming at me 20 miles an hour. <laughs> See if I can get hold of it now. I got it wrapped over here behind me. There we go. But yeah, I can't remember the last time I saw kids playing in a backyard football game. When I when I was a kid, well, I feel like we're talking about my childhood a lot here today. But when I was a kid, the Nerf footballs was a big deal. This is a nice fish right here. This ain't a bluegill right here. This is this fish is interrupting my Nerf Turbo story. What is oh and he come off. I think that may have been a channel cat. He felt like he was rolling. My line's not slimed up though. Whatever he is, he's gone. It wasn't a bluegill though, I know that for sure. I bet it's old channel cat. I'm glad he came off. I hate them things. In case I ain't told you in ten minutes. But I was trying to say, when I was a kid, the Nerf footballs were a big deal. You had the regular Nerf that nobody liked. Them things would get all waterlogged and stuff. You couldn't hardly throw them. Then you had the Nerf turbos, which you could throw a spiral with. Anybody could throw a spiral a long ways with the Nerf turbo. Then you had the Nerf Turbo, what was, it called? what was it called? The Whistler, Nerf Turbo? It had the whistle in the middle of it. And so you would throw it and it would, it would whistle as it went through the air. And that thing was pretty cool, except in the wintertime when your hands were like cold and numb and you would catch the ball and that whistle would hit you on the fingertip or something and it would hurt like hell. But, you know, I don't even know if they make a Nerf Turbo now. Then you, you had the mini Nerf Turbos, too, like hand size. And you'd play with those in the house. It's a wonder we didn't bust out windows with them things. But that was, I mean, that was what you did as a kid. You'd play with them at recess at school. We played with them in the yard, you know, with the, you know, my neighbor's brother was a lot older. He'd get out there and be, he'd be the all-time quarterback, you know. And he'd be quarterback basically for both teams. And that's what we did. I never see kids doing that anymore. I don't know what they do. It's no wonder they're all fat because they don't do anything, any exercise. With obesity being such a problem now, with where we're currently at, and you imagine these kids that are currently growing up who don't have any physical exercise they just play video games all day and night can you imagine what obesity is going to be like 20 years from now all these stores going to be out of business and obesity is going to be rampant i don't know i don't know if society just changed quickly or if it was a slow progression while I wasn't paying attention. But just walking through the mall the other night while I was getting my phone battery replaced, man, it's a, I can tell you I don't fit in. That's for damn sure. I don't fit in with this, with the, with the people today. And you go to a place like the mall, you know, up there at Westtown Mall in Knoxville. You basically, you got the Apple store, you got a food court, 
a bunch of restaurants. And everything else in the mall is clothing stores. That, I mean, that's, that's all there is in there. It's just clothing stores. How do them places stay in business? Like, I see a bunch of people, and walking through the mall, there was a lot of people there. Lots of people. But they're all walking, like, in the center, between the stores. Very also, I mean, the Apple store, was it's always packed, the Apple store. But aside from it, there really wasn't people actually in the stores in the mall. Apple was packed, and then um, I parked on the side. There's a Dick's Sporting Goods where Sears used to be, because, you know, again, Sears out of business. Sears used to be a staple of the mall out of business now so there's a dick sporting goods over there and i went in through there and they had some people in there of course but the rest of the mall stores it was pretty much just people walking around aimlessly which is probably the only exercise they've gotten walking through the mall but i don't know how them clothing stores stay in business We'll look back 20 years from now, a lot of them will be like Sears and Kmart. They'll be gone. I guess when the day comes that we're all living in a computer simulation on virtual reality, we won't even have to buy clothes. Because you'll just be wearing whatever it is in your computer world. Oh, that's a bat. We finally got us a bass right here. It took all morning. We finally got us a bass, a little large jaw. He's a small one, but this right here was more bass than I seen in my in my bass fishing tournament day. <laughs> He'd have been too small to score in my tournament, but it'd have been nice to at least see one on tournament day. <laughs> I was talking to pro moderator the other day. Some of my long-term viewers might remember him. He moderated some live streams for me there uh, two or three years ago when I finally, when I first got the live streams going. And he's a big time bass fisherman. He travels all over going to these Hobie tournaments and the uh, Bassmaster tournaments and stuff. And him and I was talking the other day about the, the sustainability of these, of these big bass tournaments, the kayak bass tournaments, because there's some big prizes in the kayak bass fishing tournament world now. And these tournaments he's traveling to, they're anywhere from like 150 to $300 entry fee. And you look at the leaderboards and, you know, they, they're getting 100 people or so thereabouts in these tournaments. But it's the same people at the top of the leaderboard. And you just wonder how long, how long is it going to be that these people who never cash in these tournaments, like, how how long are they going to keep going to these things? Like, it's one thing to be into fishing tournaments and stuff for the fun of it. You know, you, you fish in your local tournament trail or whatever, cheaper entry fees, sure. But to be competitive in these larger tournaments that's that you're traveling to, you got a hundred plus people in the field, big entry fees. Like, you know, you've got expenses to get there. You got to get there early pre-fish get a plan going what you're going to do on tournament day you got hotel travel expenses and stuff i mean people are spending a lot of money to to operate on these trails and it's like if you never cashing at what point do those people lose hope and they're just like heck with it you know 
So we were having a conversation about the long-term sustainability of those long-term or those larger trails. Now, I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe as people get better and stuff, maybe, maybe those trails consolidate. I guess the same thing kind of happened in the, in the boat world. You got the Bass Masters and then that major league fishing or whatever come along. People are all trying to keep the same handful of fishermen that are good enough to compete in their particular trails. I don't know. I don't know where it ends up. We're back into some junk up here, though. We got it all here by the kayak. I can feel it in my pedals right here. I had something over about that cherry too. Oh, I got hit again right there. There's something over here, y'all. There, I got him in. Third time's a charm. I got you, fish. You hit it. You hit it one too many times, little buddy. There he goes. He said he'll show me. He'll just unhook himself. See if he's got some friends over there too. I don't know how. Yeah, he does. We got it. He beat right there. I don't know how many bluegill I've caught now. It's been a bunch. Only one bass though. Near miss on the musky. We'd have never landed that musk. That musky could have wedged that bluegill in his mouth sideways. We'd have still never landed him. Wouldn't be no way in Hades. I'm getting blown up here on the bank. I'm going to have to work around this stuff, y'all. All this gunk on the water here. Lord, now I'm in this tree right here. I whacked myself in the back of the head with it. That gum it. Y'all, I'm looking up through here. All these leaves and stuff, I see them all the way up through here along the shoreline. Seems like this stuff's kind of washed up right through there. I wonder if we shouldn't turn maybe and kind of work this area back over here where we had a, because we, we had a long stretch here, I felt like, where we didn't have all this gunk. I think that's what we're going to do because I can't, I can't cast through this thick stuff here. We'll never get the jig to sink. It's weird how it's in patches, how it's in like certain sections. We had that long break of it where it wasn't there. And then like, like right in here, you can see this big, like this big patch of it right here. Well, I hope you can see it anyway. If this camera and it's bigger sensor will let you see it, then you saw it. We'll just work our way back. I ain't got too much longer that I can fish anyhow because I got to be ready for my dirt today. My $315 dirt. I need it though. Lord, now that all these leaves are over here, right here on this bank. It wasn't like that a minute ago, was it? Lord, it's all, it's all in right through here. I know it wasn't like that a few minutes ago when we come through here. See if we can cast her over here. I mean, we just come through this area. It wasn't like that then. Oh, I see what's happening. The current's going back this way now. It's getting pushed back. Current does weird things through here. I mean, it was moving. I thought they'd kick generators on earlier because it was going this way. Now it's coming back. I guess it's pushing that debris around. But you can see, you can see the leaves and stuff. It's going this way. It's moving at a pretty good clip too. Well, we'll see what we can do down through here. We know there's some fish in this area. We done we done sore lipped a few of them. Mm-mm. <laughs> 
<clears throat> right there was something splashing right beside us, buddy. Let's make a cast over there where he just splashed. We'll see if he's still sitting there. If we can get it to fall through them leaves. Got him too, by gosh. He was still there. He sure was. Big mistake showing me where you was at, Bluegill. He said, mistake nothing. He's trying to get on this video. He said he manipulated me to catch him. Just over again. Maybe all these leaves will wash back this way and we'll have a big open stretch here where we can fish uninterrupted. That's all I need, just some open water. <laughs> That's all I want. Well, we know there's fish here. We just got to be able to get our bait down to them. And not be catching all this stuff, whatever that is. Blade of grass right there. That's ultralight fishing. I'm telling you, if you ain't tried it, you don't know what you're missing out on. To come out today, especially after last night, just getting, you just getting my butt handed to me by them carp. I mean, I just couldn't, couldn't buy one. I couldn't, have, I couldn't have bribed a carp to bite last night. Come out here this morning and, and catch a buttload of fish, I don't know how many, but a, a buttload, that's how many we'll call it. It's been fun out here this morning. Had that musky strike, you know, that's something crazy you don't see every day. It's been a good day, y'all. Other than catching all that stuff, whatever that was on there, we got it off. I'm having to I'm having to cast pretty good ways away from the bank here because there's so much stuff up against it right now. I think that's affecting our our chances of catching something here. Let's let's slide on down a little more, see if we can. I don't know if you can see on the video, but there's a lot of leaves like right up against the bank right now. Everything was going perfect, and then the current changed. They must have done something up at the dam that either kicked another generator on or stopped generating or, or something. Something changed to make that current run like that. Typical government. They just won't leave stuff alone. That's how it goes. TVA is a government agency. I think we can I think we can get this jig closer right in here on this section of this cliff. This bluff wall here. Yeah, this looks a little better right in here. looks better but can we get a fish that is the question we'll eventually find them down through here we done we done gave a bunch of these fish a lip piercing all the way down through here so it just looked like it was going to be so much trouble to keep going the other direction with the amount of stuff in the water i felt like it was the right call to turn but I have been wrong once or twice in my life. It don't happen often. It's about as rare as having a muskie come after your bluegill. That's, 
that's how rare it is for me to be wrong. But it does happen. Well, they just got locked all of a sudden. I'd like to be cast a little closer, but I can't. It's a really nice day, though. I'm going to have a, a good afternoon of manual labor today, filling them holes in. Nice day. I've just been doing a lot of that manual labor stuff around the house. I've been moving some rocks down by the road. I got some erosion problems down by the road. The county come, I guess it was two or three years ago now. They come and they put some, some riprap rock along the edge of the road and my bank, kind of the gully there between the road, right? And I don't want to say the county done a half-assed job when they come out because, well, quite honestly, it would be insulting to any of you all who may be at work right now watching this video who are doing a half-assed job at your place of business. The county did, I mean, it was just piss-poor effort they put in to putting these rocks out. So you can tell what happened, right? So they obviously started down here and was working their way up. And you can tell they run out of rocks. And instead of being responsible and going and getting another load and doing the job right, the rocks just got more and more sparse <laughs> as they got up to me. And so because of that, because they done a half-assed job when they put them rocks in through there, we had some heavy rains back in the spring and it really just, bad erosion through there washed everything out real bad and so i sent pictures i took some pictures and emailed it to them and well it's a good thing i wasn't holding my breath trying to get a response you can't get anybody to do anything and i thought you know i could waste my time going and finding their office and going in there and showing my hind end you know and acting out and maybe i'll get something done but even if I do get something done about it, what crew is going to come out there to fix it? The same one that, that did the piss poor job to begin with. So I'm like, you know, I got all these rocks just down the road from me where they had first started their work and was doing it appropriately. I wouldn't technically be stealing as long as I'm just moving those rocks to uh, my part of the road. We'll just call it like reallocating assets reallocating county assets so i've been down there fixing my part of the road and if my neighbor who i hate if he don't like that he don't have as many rocks from the county as what he used to have then maybe he can go find their office and complain and actually get something done because i tried going through the proper channels i sent pictures i reached out they don't care they don't need my vote right now, so they don't care. But anyway, I'm not going to have any more erosion problems. I've done, a, I've done a better job than what the county could ever dream of down there. So, But my neighbor below me, who for some reason, they started at his end when they tried to fix it to begin with. He don't have as many rocks. He, he got the rocks for a couple years. Now it's my turn to have the rocks. <laughs> so that's how it's going to be, by gosh. His, his area can get eroded for a little while. But anyway, I've been doing that. And I was going to extend my fence line. Because right now i got four acres. About three of it's fenced in and, and, and mowable. And I was wanting to extend my fence on around the property. Not, not to extend my yard. I'd like to leave part of it wooded, but I'd like to have it fenced off so that as that neighbor who I hate, his 
Kudzu's out of control on his property because he don't maintain, he don't do nothing. And so it's creeping over into my woods and y'all know how kudzu is. Once it gets into the woods, it'll take over all the trees and choke them out and kill them and all that. Well, I'm trying to prevent that from happening. And so I would like to extend my fence all the way down that side of the property so that as the kudzu spreads from his side over, it would climb up that fence first before coming on to me. And I could, it'd be a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of hassle cutting kudzu off a fence, but it would help me maintain it better. It help me control it from keeping it from getting into my woods, right? And so I'm wanting to do that. Well, the way my land sits, it's, you get to the bottom of the hill because of the woods, you can't see where the fence currently ends at the top of the hill. And so I need it, I need it staked off, right? And so I called the survey company. I'd had my property surveyed before I put up the other fence, and this was back 2012, I think it was. So it's been 11 years. And so when I had that survey done back in 2012, it was $675, what it cost. I look back at the records, that's what it cost. And I thought, well, you know, surely they wouldn't have to resurvey everything. They know where the, the pins are. All they got to do is just, you know, run them flags that they do up one side there. Hopefully it won't be as expensive, but I knew prices had went up and stuff. So I thought, you know, if it's, if it's like 600 bucks, five, 600 bucks, I'll do it just so I can run that fence out. And I called the company that had done my survey before. I left a voicemail, can't get a call back. Well, I wait a week and I try it again. Well, I finally get a call back from them. Remember, and, and keep in mind, I paid $675 for the first survey in 2012. Before I say it, y'all just take a guess in your mind right now of how much you think a survey costs today for the same property that they surveyed. They already have all the records. They have every, everything, the records, the drawings, everything. They, they, they have it all, it's the same company. Take a guess how much it would cost today to have it done. I'll tell you, $2,600 is what they quoted me, $2,600. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I just need like some flags put up from the bottom of the hill up to the fence line that currently exists. That's all I need, $2,600. I was like, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. So I called around to some other companies. Most of them won't call you back. I guess it's just so much dang work for survey companies right now because of the, the housing boom in Tennessee. Everybody's moved here since COVID. We got apartment complexes and, and subdivisions going up everywhere. This is a better fish. Oh, that's a bass right there. That's a nice bass. That's a nice bass right there. We got us a good known right here, y'all. He's got me over in them rocks. We got to get, we got to be careful. We got to get him out here. I need him to swim out this way away from them rocks. Come on, buddy. Come on. I want to land this one. Oh, there he went. He got me under that dang tree over there. Cut me off. Dang, that was a nice bass right there. Dang, man. That was a good one. Got over there and broke me off on that. He just kept swimming to the left. We had all this dang boat weight pushing us up here on him. I guess he, he wouldn't, he just wouldn't turn for us. Dang, man. That was a good one. I think this is the first time that we've had to retie today. Let me stick this here behind me in the kayak here. Get that out of the way. Crap, man. Mm, mm, mm. That was a nice fish. We got to look at him briefly. I need my reading glasses here, y'all. I can't. There we go. I got it. Yeah. That's, that's tough losing that thing. It was green. It's a large mouth, but that was a good one. 
that's a that's a challenge when you ultralight fishing with light line you need a the fish have a chance they definitely have a chance with it. it's a it's a level playing field when you hook a big fish on ultralight tackle and that one there he just he started working me by them rocks and he turned and next thing you know he's got me in that tree and that was that Boy, we've had some we've had some stuff happen today ain't we the musky there to start with and now the big bass it's been a it's been a day y'all i had a bass fishing friend of mine a while back was talking about these one inch gulps here and these small jig heads and you know he's of course throwing bigger baits all the time for bass fishing and stuff and, you know he just couldn't believe you know, i was telling him about some of the big fish i've caught with this setup he just couldn't believe it you know he don't watch my videos or nothing but you will hook some big fish with this tiny bait i think it was the last ultralight video I posted or maybe the one before I got a big drum on this setup it was probably 10 pounds or more on this same setup here two pound line one inch gulp so you just never know you get a you get a bait in front of a fish's face they are gonna eat it and you make enough cast, you're going to eventually drop a bait in front of a big fish's face. And we had us a big bass right there. Boy, that current has moved us all the way down through here. That tree you broke me off in is right up there. We've, we've drifted a long ways down while I was retying. Man, I hate that that happened, though. I was worried it was going to happen when he wouldn't come out. Ideally, when that happens, when you're in that situation, one thing that'll help you is to bring your kayak, kind of steer your kayak away from the bank. And we was getting hit with all that boat wake at the time, and I was getting kind of pushed up on closer to him. So if you can get your kayak away from him, away from the fish, you got better chances of him turning and coming out to deeper water. If you're closing in on him, you're going to spook him and kind of run him up to shore, which is what you don't want. You, you want them coming out to open water so they don't get along them rocks and in this log over here and stuff. And that's what's going to, that's what's going to break you off. The two pound line it helps you cast these small jigs longer distances. But the, and you get a more natural fall to the bait because you don't have as much resistance going down through the water. But the, the big disadvantage is that you don't have the abrasion resistance that you're going to have with heavier lines. So you really need some, you need some help from the fish. You need him to come out to deeper water and that one right there just didn't do it. Man. I'm more tore up about that than I am the muskie. We actually had a chance with that bass. We had that bass hooked. The muskie we was never going to land. But it would have been cool if the muskie had it took a second, a second attempt at that bluegill we had hooked earlier. Man, oh man. I don't even remember what I was talking about either when that when that bass hit. I'm sure whatever I was saying was very important. I think I was talking about the county and them rocks that they done a half assed job on, but I don't remember if I completed that story or not. Oh well. Y'all probably didn't want to hear it no how.
more debris here we got to work around. I think that's what's hurt us more than anything coming back this direction is just all this debris we didn't have before or the current shifted. Can't get her cast where we would ideally like to place it. Some people have said too that when I'm doing these ultralight videos, I should put out a catfish rod. You know, have it going behind me or something, or put a live bait on, have it going behind me. And I've, in theory, yes, that would be a good idea, I guess, right? Here's a fish. But in practicality, it's not. Because as I get snagged and have to work around trees and stuff, we'd have another rod behind us getting caught and everything. And so I think it'd be more hassle than it would be worth. But yes, in theory, we could potentially catch a few more fish if we did that. Bear with me a minute here, y'all. I gotta do some surgery on this to try to get this bait back. Yeah, we about to retie again here, y'all. That bluegill's keeping that jig. He's keeping it. He had it so deep I couldn't get it out. Boy, we went all dang morning without having to retie, and now we're retying two jigs very quickly. I'm gonna lose most of the audience here. I can't, there we go. The lighting out here today is suspect. And I can't half see no way. I hope I don't have to retie anymore. I'm going to have to bust my reading glasses out there. I got them in that little pocket of my pedal drive and help me see these things. That's another disadvantage of the two pound line. You can't half see it to thread through these jig heads. Oh heck, that boat down there is coming toward us. I don't understand it. You know, you see somebody fishing here. You're in a boat, you can go. There's a million other shorelines that look exactly like this one. Ain't nothing special about where I'm fishing, nothing. You know, there's, there's, it's a bluff wall here where I'm at. There's tons of bluff walls down through here. I can't get the lid back on. There we go. They can go anywhere in that dang boat, but they're gonna always find somebody else to, to come fish around. Never fails. Put us another gulp on here. Yeah, we made it all dang morning without losing a jig. And here we are now too in a few minutes. There we go. That's all right. That's why I buy them in bulk, though. That way we have them. That bluegill there, he just wanted that jig so bad, he needed him a souvenir. He may have wanted it so bad, it may end up getting him. That muskie may get him. I couldn't get it out. Normally in that situation, I'd just keep him. Throw him in a cooler, you know, use him for cut bait. But since I ain't going to be catfishing today or tomorrow, if I am going to use bluegill for bait, I, I want them fresh. I don't want them several days old. They just don't do as good being, being a few days old. So we just let him go down there so the muskie can get him or that bass that we hooked. Yeah, 
it's hard right now. I wish, I wish that current would switch and go back the other direction. It might move some of the stuff that's in our way casting around. It just is what it is. We're gonna roll with it, people. We still getting a fish here and there. Got that big bass. Old Daphne the dog is going to be supervising me today. You know, Roscoe, my old dog Roscoe, when he had supervised me, I used to get on him all the time because he was always sleeping on the job. But at least I knew where he was at. Daphne, I feel like I got to supervise her supervising me. Because if I turn my back for too long, she's gone. <laughs> she runs off. To the neighbor's house I had a a new girl contact me the other day because Daphne had went all the way up the road normally she stops at the neighbor up the street that's got the other dogs and he likes her and you know he puts her in his fence there with uh, his dogs to play with and stuff and then I come up there and get her but this time, Daphne went all the way up the road, past his house, and found a new girl to play with. So she called me. I had to walk all the way up there to get her. And I was just clear, I was working on that dang fence, clearing that fence when she took off. I thought she was around me. And here it was, she is all the way up a dang road before I knew she was gone. She's something else. Hopefully she'll grow out of it eventually. I think she's still just in that puppy stage right now. She's two, but she's a handful, even still now. <laughs> Every time I think we've turned the corner and she's gonna behave, she'll, she'll act out again. She's a pretty good dog most of the time though. She has her moments. Boy, she can make me mad when she acts out. Usually when she runs off, it's when I'm right in the middle of something or when I don't have time to go get her. That's when it's gonna happen. I think we're about to get to an area here now where I can get a cast closer to that bank. It's going to help our calls, I think. I just want to catch me a few more fish, y'all. That's all I want to do. These fish ain't having nothing of it right now. Where are we at on time anyway here? Well, this video's probably running long anyway. Can't remember where we stopped the other one at. 100 and, 104 minutes, I think it was. 104 minutes, what is that? That's just under two hours. Oh, here's one. There we go. That's a nice one right there. Nice one. Come on over here, bluegill. Enjoy the enjoy the party here. Take you some snacks home with you. Yeah, nice. Oh, well. He didn't think it was very nice, apparently. It's over again. Yeah, 
Got nothing that time. I got little windows of openings here. I can cast around <laughs> anything leaves. My gosh, if there's a fish in that opening, we're going to get it though. log up here to work around too. Let's get around all this mess here. in the prop here, I think. Hold on, bear with me. Mm. Yeah, ain't too bad. All right, let me get around this boat up here. Howdy. At least it's some more open water through here. Get a cast around. Well, maybe. Yeah, right over here looks a lot better. That other fella can go down there in all them leaves, by gosh. <laughs> At least he didn't want to chat and talk. Those are the worst. Bad enough you got to see people. The ones that want to talk to you. Is, it's one thing if it's somebody like one of y'all, you know, that know me. You want to come up and say hi. That's one thing. I don't mind y'all. But random people who just want to make just normal conversation, I, I ain't into it. We already, like I said, we already gonna have to interact with the guy delivering the dirt today. It's just too much. It's just, I ain't got it in me to have all this human interaction anymore. It's just too much anymore. I just think, I ain't cut out for it. I think this was this tree we got them on this morning right here. I think it's the same one. There's one too, by gosh. Oh, just a little one that time. 
I'm pretty sure that's that tree that we got them. Things like we got some big ones on it, if memory serves me. Hopefully they're all still there. Hopefully they've forgotten that I've already hooked them once too. They ought to be rested up by this point. There's one. By gosh. Going up here, Bluegill. I'll talk to you, Bluegill, but I don't want to talk to anybody else. Fish, he understands. He gets me. Most people don't, but that fish does. Another one. Another small though. Where'd them biggins go that we was getting earlier? Where's your bigger friends at, Bluegill? He won't tell me. He refuses to tell me. Oh, what that guy out there's doing. If he's going to catfish or what. Got something hanging off the front of his back. I don't know if that's an anchor or what. Lord, let me get repositioned here. That dang boat wake's got us rocking. Yeah, the, the boat wake out on the Tennessee River today with the, the Vol Navy people, it would just be... I mean, them houseboat waves, I mean, they're big waves. They're like dang ocean waves. They'd just be all over you. Much better coming here, just getting hit with an occasional fishing boat wake, you know. Much more tolerable. And we really ain't even seen that many this morning. That one fellow that come behind us earlier he went this way of course this guy here we just went by you know god forbid he find another shoreline they ain't got somebody on it i mean they ain't but three boats out today but at least he like i said at least he didn't want to talk to me could have been worse <laughs> could have been way worse I don't, I'm pretty sure that was the same tree we got them big ones on this morning, but they don't seem to be there now, or if they are, they ain't biting. They may have learned their lesson, by gosh. They could be a wanted dead or alive poster up with that gulp on there at the Bluegill Post Office. They know that ain't a something they want to mess with again after what happened to them this morning. Them fish had to have gone somewhere though. You think they went deeper? Or are they just, they still there and not biting? Always wonder about that. That's one of them things where the live scope is handy because if they're there and just not biting, you could at least see them and you would know. With today, we pretty much just, we speculate. But ultimately, it don't matter because whether they there or not biting or they moved, either way, we ain't catching them. So it don't matter. Don't really matter. Just one of them things you think about that don't, don't mean nothing. That dang boat that went by, even he, he run the squirrels off too, even they don't want to interact with him. 
I ain't seen a squirrel since he went since we went by him. That's something when a, when a dang tree rat won't want to interact with you. I just don't come to the water wanting to chat with people. I mean, I'll talk to y'all, but y'all ain't really here. You know, I'm just talking to this camera. There's something about being in the presence of other people that's just, I don't know. It just, I just, it, I don't know. I can't explain it. You know what I'm talking, some of you out there know what I'm talking about. You introverts out there in my audience, you know, you know what I'm trying to say as I've done something with my line here again. There we go. But yeah, I don't come out here, go fishing, wanting to participate in no ice cream social. I just want to be left the heck alone, catch me some fish, have some fun, and then I'll go home early. You know, I'll go home with plenty of time for them to, the social people, they got plenty of time to have this water and have their chats and talk about whatever they want to all afternoon. I'll let them have it. But when I'm on the water, I just like the people just let me be. <laughs> well, the second the second pass down through here, we've hit this area here now. We got plenty of open water without the leaves. But the fish definitely ain't, see I'm impatient. I'm impatient y'all, but they just ain't biting as good through here now. And if it's time of day or because we've already stuck them once, maybe that boat come through, maybe he stuck a few. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention to what that guy was throwing. I don't know if he's bass fishing or, I don't know what he's doing other than annoying me. Here's just one though, another small. Another one. All right, maybe we're getting back on some here now. That's a little better one here. Oh, he's ate that jig. Okay, there it is. I thought he had ate it kind of deep too. I said, boy, we sure don't need to be retying again. I can get this one back, there we go. Oh, well, none of these bluegill want to stick around very long on camera today, do they? They ain't, they ain't into the whole filming thing today. They must be having their own Hollywood strike or something. I think that Hollywood strike's over. I think it's over now, but the bluegill, maybe they didn't get the, they didn't get the facts. They probably call it a facsimile. They didn't get the message that the, that the strike's over, so they ain't trying to be on this video. We've still got several of them on the video today, though, that's for sure. It's been a productive day, despite the conditions of having to cast around so many, uh, so many obstacles. Oh, that boat that we just passed, he's, he's taking off now. He ain't gonna fight all them leaves like we did. Come here, bluegill, you know they're pretty good. Look at this one, y'all. This one right here is another one that's prop. Well, he's gone is what he is. Let me, let me get repositioned here. I'm blowing up on this bank. I'm blowing up on the fish. That was another one there that was probably in that eight inch range. We've had some good quality bluegill today. Yeah, that boat, by gosh, he ain't, he ain't gonna fight them leaves that we were going through. <laughs> he might be smarter than I give him credit for. 
hopefully the next place he picks him out to fish, they won't be somebody already sitting on it. He didn't seem like the type that wanted to chat it up with me, so you'd have think that when he picked him out of bank, he'd have picked one of the hundreds of miles of shoreline here that didn't already have somebody on it. But again, it is what it is. That right, Bluegill. You can't control what other people do, can you, Bluegill? He can't. That Bluegill can't even control what he does. We seem to have got on some more right here. At least that guy was nice enough to idle by to not put off a big wake before he just took off. That was pretty courteous of him. Maybe next time I'll consider saying more than hi to him if I see him out again. I just don't talk to people unless they talk to me first. I don't talk to people. I'm usually friendly with them, you know, if somebody sees me at a boat ramp or something, you know, I'll, if it's somebody that knows me from YouTube, you know, if they come up and say, hey, you know, watch your video, that's one thing, you know, that's, that's nice interaction, but just like chit chat type stuff, I just don't like it. I don't like to talk to somebody just to talk to somebody which I know is ironic when I'm doing this type of video where I'm just talking about random stuff. But I just, I'll have this conversation with you through the camera, but I don't want to have this conversation with some random person I don't know out in public somewhere. I don't know, I'm weird like that. You know, I would rather, I would rather listen to a podcast conversation than to participate in a conversation. Which I know, it's, it's weird. I know. I understand that, I, that there's something wrong with me. I get it. But that's just how I am. I accept it. And so I try not to put myself in situations where I'm going to have to have awkward interaction. I have enough self-awareness about me to know my malfunctions. That's about all you can ask for from yourself is just to, to know your limitations. <laughs> that right, Bluegill. <laughs> that guy, well, he went back to the ramp over there. He said he's so sick of dealing with these leaves out here, he wasn't even going to fish anymore at all. He's had enough of it. Maybe he's got some dirt getting delivered to his house today, too. Oh, I thought we had us another one. I'd be curious to see if, if fishing Key Largo, he's the one, every one of these ultralight videos, he comments and he watches them all start to finish and he counts up everything. Fish caught, longest streak, number of species, he even counts up however many advertisements they put in his videos. Which I, you know, YouTube, YouTube randomly puts that stuff in. But hell, he counts all that. So it'd be interesting to see if he watches this and how many fish we ended up with today. I'd have liked to have landed that bass though. That one's, the muskie was cool. But the bass, I mean, we had that thing hooked. Like, he was legit hooked. We fought him. It just, just bad luck for him to swim into that tree. Or log or whatever it was there. That was just bad luck. The muskie was good luck for that to even happen. The bass was bad luck. I'd have liked to... I'd like for him to at least made one more jump so I could get a better, a, what was it, 
oh, we got line problems again. I'd like to at least got another look at him and see, get a better gauge of how big he was. Boy, look at this mess we've got. My gosh. Y'all need to fix your line here. You got your, you got your line all messed up here on your reel, folks. I ain't got time to be fixing all this mess for you. I know it wasn't me that got it all messed up like that. Definitely couldn't have been me that done it. Oh, we had another hit right there. I still need to try to make it out to Del Hollow too. That was on my to-do list to do this fall is to go out there, do some ultralight fishing, do some carp fishing, try to get a some of them big mirror carp they got, and I still ain't I still ain't got around to it. You know, doing all these home projects with the the dirt and the rocks. I got windows getting put in. Got all kinds of little projects to schedule and stuff and I just ain't done it but I want to get out there before it turns cold I don't want to go when it's freezing cold although they say Del Hollow's apparently dang squirrels throwing nuts at us up there well, another 10 foot he'd have got me uh, they say Del Hollow when it's miserable cold that's the time to be smallmouth fishing out there But when it's that miserable cold, all I am is miserable and cold. <laughs> I ain't enjoying no fishing. When it's so cold, you can't feel your hands. At least with catfishing, once my, once my baits are down, I can stick my hands in my pockets and stuff. But when you ultralight fishing or you bass fishing or whatever you casting you can't you can't do that can't already keep my, can't, my hands warm come here bluegill yeah, we got away from all them leaves over and through here and we're starting to catch some fish again it may just be a situation where i just couldn't get my jig where i needed it cause of all the debris while we stopped catching them for a while. I ain't gonna fish much farther down to. There's a point that comes out right here where the emery goes into the clinch. I ain't gonna fish down much farther here. I'm just gonna get down here to it and probably call it quits on the day here, get home and be ready for that dirt. I gotta be home for it for a couple of reasons. One, I need them to put that dirt where I want it put. Cause it's a big, it's a big dump truck full of dirt to bring in. So I need it put behind my shed where the worst of the holes are. I'm gonna have it put right there. That way I won't have to move it as far. And I'm, they're a cash business. So I gotta be there to pay them in cash. So, got to make sure I'm there for that. Oh, we're coming back up on some leaves and crap here now. I thought we was done past all of it. Let me just back up a little bit here. We'll make a few more casts right here in this area where it's clear before we try going through that mess. I don't know how it is. I got my, I brought my front camera mount for this kayak. I grabbed it out of the car, but didn't grab the measuring board. I don't know how I did one without the other. I used to keep the measuring board and the camera mount and all that stuff in the kayak when I was traveling spot to spot you know down the road you know house to lake and stuff 
But I used to have, boy, this bluegill here's got some fire in his belly, don't he? He's still wound up, man. But I had me an insert for this pedal drive. So when the pedal drive's gone, you had a, a board there, basically. And it would keep things in the kayak as I went on the road. Well, I guess I must have either not had that thing latched down all the way or maybe I hit a bad bump or something. But I lost that board. I guess it popped free and worked down and so it's on the highway somewhere. And so now I got to take things out of the kayak. And so I take that board out and my camera mount out and I grabbed one and not the other when I got out here. So even if we, we had a, if we had landed that big bass earlier, we'd have been able to get a picture with him, but we couldn't have got a length on him. These bluegill, some of these bluegill have wanted a picture with me too. They've been out of luck today. Bluegill, they didn't feel like they got their money's worth today. I've had a good time with them, though, even if they ain't had a good time with me. I love this style of fishing. It's just, it's fun. It's relaxing. It's easy. You know, just, I'll come out here because I knew I wouldn't deal with the Vol Navy people up through here, and I literally, I launched at that ramp right over there across the channel and come right over here to the shoreline and just started fishing, you know. Ain't nothing special about this area. It's just a rocky cliff wall type bank. I mean, there's miles and miles of shoreline that looks just like this all the way up and down the river. And they fish all up and down it too, you know. But this is just a fun, easy, relaxing way to fish. And, I enjoy the heck out of it. I'd enjoy that fish right there a little more if he'd eat that bait instead of just nipping at it. We're going to try to catch us one more here if we can. It looks like my battery's running low. This one, we're 112 minutes here on this battery. This one, for some reason, this battery got more time out of it than the other one. But I wanted to I wanted to try these batteries out too, just to see how long a runtime I could get without the battery pack, just curiosity. Which only needing two batteries to do this long, that's that's pretty dang good. Filming a normal video, like how I do my catfish videos, I may could do a full trip on just one battery possibly. Since I wouldn't be running the camera continuously. I don't know. So anyway, y'all, they probably ain't many of you still watching to this point in the video, but if you are, you know, leave me some comments what you think about this camera setup and all compared to my other one. Let me know down there in the comment box, especially the picture quality. You know, because DJI, they're, they're touting this bigger sensor in this camera being better in low light like it was this morning when we first got out here. So I'm, I'm real curious to see what this footage looks like and curious to get y'all's opinion on it, on how it compares to the GoPro at low light. I'm wondering if it's gonna be as grainy as the GoPro. Well, anyway, there's there. I think that's gonna be the last fish of this video because I'm running out of battery very quick we had another water spot on that lens i don't know if that's affected y'all or not boy i'm dark on that screen right there i wonder if i need to turn this way maybe see so y'all yeah that's better there look into the light that's that's pro tip 101 right there look into the light when you're talking to the camera <laughs> but uh anyway y'all i've had a good time this morning uh caught several fish we've navigated all this crap here on the water pretty well all things considered had a couple crazy thing that musky man i hope that showed on camera i hope that did but that was pretty awesome that was that was a pretty awesome thing and i wish we could have got that bass landed it was a pretty good bass but um, anyway i've had a good time but i'm about to get on up out of here i reckon and 
go do some work in the yard. We gotta fill some holes, y'all. I can't be hitting them holes with the new mower. So we're gonna go get that dirt and start on that. But uh, anyway, appreciate you. For those of you watching this time of year, sticking with me, thanks so much. I, I, I like y'all. I like you all more than I like these bass fishermen that come up on you here when they see you fishing an area and they still gonna stop and, and getting your daggone way. I like you all much better than them because y'all a lot more courteous than they are. But anyway, I'm in this video for real. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.